All right, welcome back to the Just a Ride podcast. We are, in fact, a democracy, sort oh. of. I was voted into doing the intro today. You're welcome, and it's I'm sorry. Well. But here we are with your weekly dose of dopamine and, uh, I don't know, guilt? What else do we sling? What do we sling? Lots Some of shame. Guilt. Uh, yeah. Some shame. Mostly guilt and shame and uh, semen. Yeah. A lot of, lot of, yeah. 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 But, uh, but we're everywhere. still here. We're still here for you, baby. So Reproductive this is, uh, shrapnel. This, this is the Just a Ride podcast. It is Just a Ride. And uh, I am one of your hosts. My name is Shaden. The Pooh Bar. The Pooh Bar. And I'm the did, Pee Bar. Did, in fact, once poo in the bar. And then you get the yeah. name forever. Yep. I peed only once in a bed, but That's I how works. forever be That's the how P-Bar. nicknames happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we got the Wank Bar. We kind of just know. threw that one yeah, at you. Yeah, I don't think Wank Bar is going to be there anymore. I think it's because of some of the jokes that you and I have said in private, <laughs> where I'm like, he's the Wank Bar for sure. <laughs> There's something about Cheetos at one point. Cheeto dust, where I'm like, when does, I see Cheetos now, I think of Jeff. And it just does kind of seem like that uh, bear bear Zach picture. is the one who's really pushing the Wank Bar and I am. Yeah. Nobody you else have is on bar. board. You got, okay. Yeah. Bear bar. Yeah, I, think, I think bear I think, bar. I think, uh, I think bear bear is kind of. Bear yeah. bear, yeah. Well, then I, then I say we, we search for other names. Pee bar, poo bar. I don't know. We'll so figure you got to all three have it a bar. It has to be a bar. No. Yeah. Well, I'm fine with being pee bar. I'll piss in your bed. We're taking okay. we're taking submissions chance. for uh, Jeff's variation of bar. You can email us at just a ride pod at gmail.com. Bear bar sounds good. I, I'm I'm not bear opposed bar. to bear bar because <laughs> it's like bear bar. Wank, wank bar fits you. We'll tell. We'll have <laughs> to tell the two. We'll tell He's a story in the go. future. It's I'm really, not. It's, it's <laughs> I feel like it's an accurate depiction of all three of us, just right I, I, here. I don't pick my own name. And I think breaking it, it doesn't up work is, like that. Right. Well, we gave you. So bear you guys bear. figured out. To, and, to be fair, based on the variables I'm familiar with, I probably wank bar more than either one of you. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of information. <laughs> we like, oh, oh, uh, sir. Let's get yeah. some data on that. Hast thou thrown thine gauntlet? Let's think about this for a second. Okay. It's, if we're talking about amount of time yeah, that you're, you're both in your committed life. relationships and I'm not. True. That's why I think I'm the victor of that. No. <laughs> jokes. It's jokes. These are all jokes. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Just Right. Is this the 12th one? Are we at a dozen? I, of these? Yeah. 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 The crazy. dirty dozen. Hell yeah. And you, you have not been around for a couple of weeks. No. It's good to see you guys. It's weird to be back in society. Yeah. Well, you have so. a story I think that we should start with right out <laughs> the gates. Yeah. My bear hunting trip, it was amazing. Bears. So. I did, uh, which I'm against a whole hundred percent. It was a cute bear. You, uh, I'm for it. I've had it. I've eaten it. I love it. It's I was delicious. delicious. <laughs> I want to hug flies. Good. I want to. I think you guys are jealous of flies because they can fly backwards, and everybody's just pissed at them. So we kill I currently them. have a serious vendetta against flies because they can fly backwards, and you're jealous. <laughs> you look at them. They're that like might be one reason backwards. around of my list of a hundred reasons that might be ninety nine. Yeah, but <laughs> it's probably on the list. I think okay. it's sub- subliminally very high. <laughs> but all right, sorry to interrupt. All anyway, right, so obviously. Uh, I came down last week uh, into reception just to make a couple posts because some things were funny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's there's a story that uh, goes behind me standing naked uh, in the forest. I feel like we should explain that first, maybe. Just uh, Jeff, in the shit box, SH, kitty butthole tea box, uh, Jeff shared a very provocative photo that I can't believe wasn't taken down. <laughs> Didn't show anything other than, no, you know, just a chef's booty. Hat. And, some, and Some side cheek. And the little sparkler coming out of your Side butt. cheek is better but than direct. That was the sun's joke. That, that, <laughs> that wasn't intended. That was just the sun. No, so... Uh, <laughs> Looked like sparkler out of his ass. It just, <laughs> yeah, and, so, and it was a camera that caught me cooking. But So anyway, the, the story is... Naked man in the woods is what yeah, we got. So I was bear hunting the last couple of weeks up in the woods. Just small tent. I um, was up there for my, by myself for a few days. Then my girlfriend came up. And the day that she left right before she left camp we'd come back and i'd noticed that uh, two of our our milk containers had been they were empty water containers and they'd been crushed i'm like oh shit we got a bear mm-hmm. hanging around and then uh she left that night was fine next day i went out uh baiting and came back and uh that's when i found bear bait hanging out of the truck the, the the bear had gotten inside of my truck um what I'd, you doing bear bait yeah it was where, which was where i had all the bear bait obviously they come in and he got into the bait and, and had that ripped forest. half a bag out uh which wasn't you know that happens not a big deal well then i hunted that night and then came back again and he was in, he was in my camp 
So I just went after him with a four wheeler. <laughs> just tried to drive at him. With I just went wheeler. after him with a fucking knife. Yeah, <laughs> and he drove <laughs> his off. mouth <laughs> naked. So already with blood on him yeah. for some reason. We don't know. He's been busy in the woods. <laughs> Anyway, get to the chopper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time to bleed. So, and it's hot, man. I mean, it, it was it was smoky up there the whole time. Oh. It was hot. It was like seventy to seventy five degrees at night. Mm. Um, but and then so th- after he dries off, I'm I'm cooking dinner and just kind of hanging out. Had a small fire going, and I'm listening, and I can hear him coming in behind behind the trees. So first he was baiting. For those of you keeping score, and then he was coming in. Yeah, <laughs> which is irresponsible. You should at least pull out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't know the. Thing. So I, I hear him Jeff's walking been. in, then he crashes off. I'm like, God damn it! So I make my fire a little bit bigger. I'm kind of, kind of trying to make some noise. Well, ten minutes later, he comes back again and starts crashing off. Well, now I'm pissed. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, you motherfucker, come on! It's man versus bear. Yeah, yeah, I'm calling all. And then it was like, it was at about this time that I'm like, you know. I have always said that I want to die from a bear attack. As ridiculous as it is of happening in my tent, it's still a bear attack. Right. It's yeah. kind of cool. Easy there, Revenant. Yeah. But then I was like, well, what if I can win? That would be amazing. He'd bite his dick off. So, and he'd <laughs> There's a bone in the middle. I don't know if you'd <laughs> he'd bite it off. Yes, care. there is a bone now. <laughs> um, Spit it into his face. <laughs> Take your dick bone, bear. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, so then I grab this big stick and I'm screaming at the bear and I'm like, "You fucker! I'll take you on with this stick." And I'm calling him on. Shit. And then just like I'm like, you know what? Story. Fuck this. What's that? <laughs> is this like a big fish story? No, no this no. is about a squirrel. <laughs> Not at Were all. you really in the tent? Like, fuck off. Oh. No. <laughs> I don't want to. No. Sick of nature. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I started thinking of dances with wolves and the dude dancing around the fire yeah. with a yeah. stick. And I'm like, that. That's I'm what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. So oh, I crank of up course you did. heavy metal music, strip down into my just my boots. I just got my rubber boots on, built the fire up, and I was dancing around, and I was making you know just so making as much noise as I could, mostly because I didn't. Universe. So much yelling at the me. bear, but I really didn't want him to come in. Was really what was so much on. of me respects that. Where it's like, yeah, that's human shit. And uh, you that's know what? Human shit. But here's yeah. the thing: while I was doing it, you know, I'm not. A spiritual guy, but, but I will you tell you now. that you went, you what was happening fuck. was something started to happen. I mean, like besides seriously, the boner, besides the boner, yeah. Bes- yeah, besides that, that that got chafed is what okay. happened. Just too much <laughs> so, of it, yeah. Too much of a good thing, yeah. Yeah, in the woods. <laughs> plus the mosquitoes. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, so like something happened where I was like really getting into it, and it was like at this point, I was like, I'm like, this, I'm in my heaven right here i'm i'm in the middle of the woods i mean there's nobody around for hundreds of miles i got a bear hanging out here fuck yeah you know i mean i'm not totally roughing it i mean i got a tent i you know i, I brought some stuff meanwhile your but, nsa guy's looking at you from a satellite just typing out notes like this probably. is the best day of the week <laughs> this is pretty interesting Sorry. so yeah i was like i'm naked dancing around the fire and just totally getting into it and then i'm like there's got to be more i can get deeper into this because i was like really feeling it in my mind and in the body and everything so I started to try and sing, like like Native American type. Shit, yeah. Is it considered chanting? I don't I don't yeah, know what they would consider cultural it. appropriation, bro. It could be that. <laughs> you should feel bad about your spiritual experience. Why? <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's the best the answer that you response. possibly have. No. <laughs> Continue. That's rad. That anyway, rad. the point is, so it, I tried to sing, and what I found out is it's really, really hard to do. Yeah. So really, it was just me screaming and hollering out in the woods, trying to make it sound good, and I don't know how that they do it. So, but I just, I did that for a couple hours until I was totally exhausted. And I finally just, I just crash. I sit down, and I'm sweating, and I'm I'm still thinking about, God, how hard that singing was. And uh, The ones that do it well Zach, are like ever, the Aretha then, Well, then Did you ever jump around uh, and, and sing at the same time? Yes. Yeah, I have. <laughs> you know what that's like? It's <laughs> fucking hard. It is hard. Well, then I started thinking, it's like, I wonder if within fun, actually, the native yeah. cultures... Like, I see what they you're saying. People, fucking like... Uh, I wonder if they have people that can sing and like can't sing, just like just like any other It's culture. exactly it. Aretha Franklin is the one that we hear when we hear Native American chants. It's like, that's their best singer. That's a kick-ass singer, because most yeah. people can't do that. Yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, so. it's the same as like Aretha Franklin. Most yeah. of us can't do any of that shit. <laughs> well, I started, I was like, I don't know why I picked I Aretha wonder if somebody, Franklin. Because like, like, she's a great fucking singer. <laughs> yeah, like, they go so. to people like, okay, you the need to just one. mouth the words over there. Or somebody that's really good. You know, hey, he's like, I, I could go on I, tour. I grew up in church, man. I've, I've heard all ends of that spectrum. <laughs> Singing good and bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, well, I had a lot of choir time, too. Well, so. I'm just saying, I was just saying. over there. I know we're in the same tenor section, but you need to be on that. That end, yeah, the you, furthest end. You know, there's a lot of reverb in that bathroom. If you could go sit in there, <laughs> fucking the harmonies are getting pretty weak. Okay. So the bear didn't come and bite your dick off while you were waggling around. There's more to the story. Okay. Let's hear it all. I want yeah, to hear every We're going to keep interrupting morsel. you, so you should probably Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> prepare yourself to be annoyed by us, because this is fun. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, after I was dancing, I was, I was thinking about, uh, God, I wonder if they had good singers and bad singers, and then I'm like... Oh, what if they would have just like taken their singers and their good singers and like went to other tribes and like put on you know concerts for trade or something like that? Yes. you know, a, a instead of having to it, chance, in, instead of having to take them over, you know, yeah. and then you know, like then it starts working, you know. So like, oh, this is a way we can have peace and kind of a government and there's trade without killing, you know. Then they want somebody sings a wrong note. Yeah, then they want to diversify and they're like, Whoa. oh, we can go to the white man, and, you know, they're like, yeah, we'll trade. What do you got for trade? And we're like blankets you know oh. and it, they're like you got uh, you got, it just goes to shit for get some good songs but, <laughs> yeah exactly like, we were trying to sing music to you and you gave us fucking <laughs> shitty things we don't want yeah. and yeah the end of the story was we sucked there anyway so <laughs> did all that dance and everything and finally decided to crash out i, I kept a lantern on because the fire was going to go out kept the music on because we've had bears in our camps before right usually i pull a camper up there uh, and the bears have always gotten into our spare tents that we have. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, he's going to try to get in this tent. I just, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that, but I will. I'll figure it out. Real quick. Yeah. I think about, so how many hours are, are you into this by now? <sighs> Six. Okay. Around hour zero, I would have shit myself and passed out because <laughs> there's bears around, dude. <laughs> no. This whole time it's no. like, th these things are bears. Like, like I'm I, scared if it's a big fucking raccoon so, in the yard. Like, like, I, God, I, I respect them, yeah, but I'm so hours. cavalier about it because it's like I grew up in a place where bears were in my yard on a regular basis, you know, so uh, black bears especially, and they were almost like, they're like dogs that could eat you, you know, but like they're, I mean, they're not exactly like dogs, but they're funny little fucking animals, you know, and well, so I, like I respect them, but they don't really wig me out and most of the time they don't really want to have anything to fucking do with you unless they're either curious or they have cubs with them you know? more of my story <laughs> well just think about how cats are fucking so dangerous and they're five pounds and it's like that bear's got all the same shit and it's yeah well i saw this that's the thing is i saw this bear than i do by bears i, I, I saw this bear way. and it wasn't a big way. bear but it was a big enough bear he could kick my ass and kill me if he For wanted sure. to yeah. and that's the thing is i don't want to surprise you know the bears he's just fiddle fucking around mm -hmm. but if i respond in a way that makes him attack instead of retreat in the tent that's when i would have a problem yeah. right uh so anyway about six hours it was about midnight i finally went to bed racked out woke up at six o'clock in the morning i crawl out oh i guess i should back up <laughs> because i knew that bear was coming in i had put up a tree uh a uh Trail cam. A trail cam yeah. on a tree that pointed right to where all the cooking supplies were. Because if he's going to come see. into camp, that's where he's going to go first. So I wanted to just at least catch it. And I didn't want to die if I got attacked. Get it on that footage. Hopefully on get it on footage so somebody knew what the you, hell Jeff. happened and when it happened. Yeah. And just so, so we can have some entertainment at the end. Huh? Yeah. You know, to, and, 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 and they would have like a gladiator. They would <laughs> have a statistic for the state parks. Yeah. Okay. That. That's good. <laughs> of course, it's a national you, forest. But. You're thinking about the children. I appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, so I throw on my boots, still naked, step on out of the tent. I turn and just look. I stand up and I turn around and look out. And there's that goddamn bear. Like 30 yards away from me, just staring at me. I'm like, you son of a bitch. He liked uh, the so goods I, you had on offer. You could, he's like, hey. Uh, so I started yelling. I'm like, you motherfucker. Get, what, what are you doing? Just yelling. At, so I come around the tent. And I'm going after him in my rubber boots, naked, going, God, I hope he doesn't attack me. Because <laughs> he just kind of looked. And then he just kind of trotted away about. 70, 80 yards, turned and just sat there and looked at me. He wasn't know. impressed, huh? No. It like, must be cool. So now I'm, and then I'm like, God damn, man. Good thing I woke up. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I had, uh, 
where I had set my camera in one of the you can in the in the picture that I posted, there's a blue cooler. That bear took a shit on the other side of the blue cooler where the camera couldn't pick him up. Like he did it on purpose. <laughs> like he sat there and watched me all basket? night and he's like, Yeah, I, I heard your challenges and this is what I think of you and I shit in your camp. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> it's, a, it's a chess match for the this picnic. Yeah, it's war. Yeah. So then Ed, he was there. I'm like, you know what? That's it. I'm gonna bait that son of a bitch, and that's what I'm, the bear I'm gonna tag. <laughs> I'm gonna eat you. So <laughs> I started. I started cooking bacon, wearing my boots, cooking bacon. <laughs> That's Hence where the, the trail cam yeah. was. Yeah. And that's how that happened. And that's how the shit box that, got shut down. Got your naked ass wearing nothing but your, I'm, your crack Showed up boots. in boots. Yeah. So and then that little bear, bear, bear. Then he came back when I was hunting and what did he do? Oh, he destroyed oh, he destroyed some more just coolers, water coolers and stuff like that. And then I had I came off the mountain for a day, came back up and he got in some more coolers. And then he stole uh, he stole 10 gallons of gas, two five-gallon containers <laughs> He knows how expensive containers that shit is. <laughs> I mean, There's a black market so for So now, bear gas. because of me, we're going to have bears that are addicted to huffing. They're going to just be all crazy <laughs> running around out in the mountains. Looking for, the, they'll be siphoning out of four-wheelers and trucks. Yeah, yeah. RVs. Yeah. They are pretty small. So that's probably my you'll have one. You'll have, they'll find a bear that's just been like cooked from the inside out because he was huffing gas and a spark happened. <laughs> I was wondering, you know, I. That happened to somebody when I, where I was growing up. I like was. North of where I was growing up. I was just. I was, one little spark set up. gas, him and his oh, brother in the shed and dropped something. Like static electricity in their oof. beard or something. Like literally flash fried him from the inside. Oh. Died. Jesus Christ. What a way to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's not one of the drugs that I'm I'm interested in, I guess, in this world. I'm not trying that one. Yeah, I've done <laughs> I'll, I'll, risk reward analysis on that one and the math did not add up in, no. in the I want to huff gas uh favor. That so. that adds to that where it's like I I still don't and I more so don't. <laughs> no thanks to <laughs> for that. the additional input. Yeah. Also it's still terrible. <laughs> so fucking A, dude. So a bear invaded so, your camp yeah, several so times. Is that the one Shit. you ended up getting or not? No, no, I ended up not. Damn no, so he uh, he stole the gas. So uh, I'm kind of cheering for the bear. Yeah, yeah. good, good job, won. bear. <laughs> yeah, he won. No, it was it was it was fun. Um, Playing chess he, with the bear. Yeah, he came into camp a couple times. But no, I saw more bears this year than I've ever seen. But there was never That's any good. big bears. And then I, I finally took one on the last day so it's gonna be your uh legends of the fall bear it's your bear that's gonna get you later when you're yeah, an old exactly. man exactly. <laughs> big bear big so, bear chase that's a fucking big bear great chase movie. movie i just recently watched that movie again after i haven't seen it since i was like a teenager and it's i forgot how fucking that's such a good movie legends of the fall legends of the fall i don't remember it very well that was brad pitt right yeah yeah i don't remember that yeah you should watch it it's fucking good i was thinking great outdoors that's also a great movie his, from the his 80s. dad in the movie really hates the government so it's fuck I'm there solidly in your wheelhouse well <laughs> if that's I'm there that's all I had you had me at government shit talking well why don't we move on unless you got some more I mean I feel like you could tell us the whole the whole yeah. weekend well, be yeah, fun. The whole show. No, other than I mean you know we saw lots and lots of bears and and you got you got to be one with nature and and the most human way I've heard a person do. And by the way, Jeff Jeff does kind of look like what you'd imagine a guy that out naked in the bear, in the woods fighting a bear or challenging a bear. He looks like that kind of guy. He looks like a guy that would be like, "I'll fucking take a bear. Don't worry, guys. I got the bear." Yeah, that's probably what I would do. I mean, I his beard also, is almost 100% subsequently that. die. So, but. well, he didn't though. So you chased after a bear, and in your mind you were like. Please don't do the thing that you probably, <laughs> want, you know, you have. Please don't kill me. Yeah. Fucking I. My brother and I chased after a black bear with golf clubs one time when we were teenagers. And uh, we're lucky that it decided to just let us get away with that because that was, in retrospect, a really dumb thing to do. Dude. Well, there's some bear like, We chased it for like a ways, too. <laughs> we're, like really tempting it's bait. Those big ass Kodiak bears that are, I think it's the Kodiak bears. What are the big ass bears that are up in Alaska? Is it Kodiak? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and those are, and like polar bears. Those things frighten me a bit because they're the size of, you know, like yeah, I think 10 I, bears. Or yeah, something. and they're almost yeah. always on the brink of starvation. Yeah, so. they're fucking ready yeah. to eat. Mm -hmm. you, you look like an orca, sir. <laughs> oh, not good. So, yeah, basically the last uh, two weeks of my life uh, ended up being what Shaden's advice was on the last on the last episode, which was 
you know, go do something different, unusual, something that makes you uncomfortable. And I, I mean, not that bear hunting and all that is unusual to me, but dance around the fire naked was pretty awesome. That's actually probably going to be part of my life. Uh, honestly, it, Jeff's a hippie now. It, de- yeah, kind of, kind of. I, I will. It's hard to. It, it sounds stupid when I sit here and talk about it now, but the mindset that that whole situation put me in was in a place that that I'd never experienced before. And it saying was, it out loud won't ever do it justice. And yeah, kind of thing. yeah, the closest thing that I've ever been to any type of spiritual belief or or at least a temporary feeling. So you got high on being a human being inside yeah. your own mind in the nature. It's pretty cool. That yeah. is cool. So uh, you know challenge the listeners go get naked in nature but maybe not where bears are and see no I don't. no maybe the bears bear, aren't the gonna bear call has... the police on you don't know where other people are because they'll rat <laughs> you in the woods because they don't understand not at the campground not at the camp koa yeah keep your dick yet. in your pants at the camp koa <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's ridiculous that i can't do this in my front yard right i mean honestly well, i mean there's there's codes and oh, yeah, i understand and yeah, oh, yeah i mean I'll, you know i mean you can but it, you don't get a lot of those you only get a couple yeah. before it doesn't end up as well as you go to the zoo. Did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the people's zoo. Exactly. exactly. It really depends on your neighbors, if we're yeah. being honest. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's why I feel like it's a, it's a it'd be a great idea. I've always thought of just finding a group of people of responsible adults that feel the same way, and they're like, you know, you're gonna have neighbors anyway, so why not pick your neighbors and invest? I, I don't like being in business that much with you know when you invest a lot of money with friends and stuff. It they becomes call those- a weird thing usually like cults <laughs> exactly what, what i want you to do is give me all your money move into my house and we're going to figure out this world together yeah, yeah and bring bring your wives because the sleeping, what I sleeping with other people's wives is part of you have to do that if you're going to be a real cult you apparently do. i i don't know that it's wise but i i from what i've read that's the requirement from what i've read <laughs> if i'm going to run this cult i have to castrate all the other guys that's what i learned so if that you'd like to join my cult and you is, don't like your balls. That is a thing and I'm going to have to go. I mean, you got to join, get Sorry. in my cult, get some balls removed. I'll, I'll lead uh, I'll lead the uh, a different chapter in a different place where I don't that have seems, to be the one who gets castrated. That seems right. That's like when I was part of the cult of the curious, it was kind of like, do I have to be castrated? Because I'm just going to start a little sector yeah, on the side. We're going to make a franchise. So, <laughs> yes, for sure. We might so I told you, I had, a, I had a uncle that was in a cult. Did you? Yeah, you did. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he was in the Moonies. The Moonies. Yeah. Who were those guys again? Did they, uh, so you, you know, remember the movie Run into Town and they'd all just coordinate like mooning someone at the same time like, <laughs> while wearing <laughs> while wearing moon boots yeah. under the. Do you remember the, the movie Airplane? Airplane? Yes. Hell yeah! I believe it was like the same folk that were wearing boots for heads, wearing like the robes and passing out flowers and shit. Okay, I, I think, but I'm not I, I, like the Hare Krishnas. I don't, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I was like, okay, it was wow. like 1971. I see why people was, want to do that. I see why people want to jump out of society and they want to follow things that feel good. I definitely get that. Well, the problem was they wanted to kill him. They were going to sacrifice him. Okay, that's not good. So he that, escaped and to, ended up living so. with uh, my family. Apparently, that's the story I was told. I've Probably never talked to him about it, but he doesn't talk to me. For let me know if joining a cult works reasons. for anybody, but I haven't seen it work yet. I haven't. Doesn't seem like a good. Way to go you know, about living. I honestly, I think it. I think under the right circumstances, it could work. But, oh, here we but fucking. It, but it breaks down exactly where I said a minute ago. It always fucking starts to break down when the cult leader starts drinking his own Kool Aid, and mm. he's like, "You know what? I deserve start to start fucking your own everybody. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I deserve to start fucking everybody, and I am. I am God. I am an yes. avatar for a god. That's where it always comes off the rails. So if you can, if you have. If you ever, if there's ever a person who has the personality to go right up to that line but not step across it, I think you could have a successful cult. Oh. I'm also not sure if that person exists, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have. Let's find an example of that person, and we'll go from there. Hey, you, how you doing? You gonna try it out? <laughs> All right. To so join Shane's you know, cult, if it's for science, it's really. I'm just. I'm. An, I'm an altruist at, I mean, at heart. It's so. not like you haven't <laughs> mentioned that one of us should probably do that at some point. Probably. It's be interesting to see. Just for <laughs> our own entertainment. I'm just a giver, you know. Just a Acts of pop. service is my love language. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the listeners uh, are used to being in a cult. Uh, so maybe they'd like a, a separate side cult. Or, or maybe they just want to be in a smaller cult. Because the cult like, of the curious is that like huge. your side squeeze? Your side I cult? So. The, this but is then, the cult I fool around with on the weekends. <laughs> then sometimes you figure it out and you're like, this is where I want to be. This is the cult. This is the cult. So join Shane's cult. cult for this cult because it's 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shallow, shallow cult leader. I have... <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Anyway, just a right pod tangent at Gmail. <laughs> we'll get you uh, into Shaden's cult. You just have to ask him, and he'd be gladly to. You can live in his basement, or well, uh, there might be an audition. You know, okay, you, before you get to live in my basement. Whatever. I'll give, I'll put a good word in for you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'll put a good. Uh, You'll get in. It'll be fine. Yeah. All right. Nicotine toothpicks. I want to jump to this real quick because oh, this yeah. kind of combines two things. Uh, like we're very proud of you guys. So many of you have, yeah. have decided to quit smoking. We have a list of people that we just know from Facebook. Uh, it's over a dozen of you guys have posted that you've decided to follow. Really, Jeff is the That's one fantastic. That, that taught us all about these. And, and these nicotine toothpicks help me a fuckload. And it sounds like they're helping you. And congratulations to those of you that have gone weeks or two weeks, three weeks, and without cigarettes and yeah, stuff or red. tapered off. Now we got some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> and this leads us to <laughs> fuck this thing. <laughs> yes, I can't yeah. even I can't even believe how f- fucking weird this is. But so this company that we go through is called Nicotine Picks. And you can find them at nicotinepicks.com. And I totally recommend it if you're on the fence. Because they're not going to be here for the next six months, starting in the end of September. Not because they aren't popular, because fuck, you guys, just our audience, bought the shit out of their stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we appreciate that, and they appreciate that. But here's what we want to say fuck this to. The FDA. Seriously. The, the FDA, they found a company that they feel like they really got to make sure is, is just got to be extra looked at by them because they're hurting people. They saved my goddamn, like probably 20 years of my life. Literally, their product was the thing that's probably going to yeah. make it so I live a long, dumb old time. Uh, or longer than I would have. I, I really don't understand. Seems very, very awkward what the FDA uh, is uh, picking and choosing to look into and not look into. It is really consistent, I thought. It just seems like the Super. model of consistency. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of them and government in general. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking what in the hell? So basically, for the next six months, they're under review. Uh, basically, because I think these flavors are so delicious that the FDA thinks that kids might think they're candy and maybe um, they will, maybe they yeah, will. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Cause you yeah. know, they don't make whipped cream flavored <laughs> vodka or right. cookies and cream flavored meth. whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Cookies and cream. Meth. I think that or was still fucking meth. candy with marijuana <laughs> in it. Made. I mean, yeah, you know, right. Literal, although that's literal been, candy. Literal candy. Although that's been the I issue got, like, with turtle. With you know, those turtles chocolates, those are really good. I know what those are. Yeah. The, yeah. So yeah. I got those as an edible those one time and they were the same. I, don't I, think they, I was like, huh. they tasted the same, but yes. you got huh? yeah, yeah. See, that's the that's where like edibles would be a problem for me because uh, if if like if there's a I I can't have candy and shit around because I will eat all same. of it. Yeah, I get yeah. you know I have a same box of whatever C's candy. You watch or, me with those. Fucking don't judge me on what brands I, I had earlier. Oh, I was like, I was like, you were Mister Self Control. You had a few handfuls. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck! I got to put these away because <laughs> I ate all your wasabi peanuts last time. Oh god, those are good, <laughs> so good. A little sinuses fucking rush. Anyway, I was fucking <sighs> saying something. What the hell was I saying? Sorry, I we're talking about you. nicotine toothpicks, and then we went to marijuana candy. Oh, and yeah, how that was a problem. Oh, yeah, because I, I would eat the whole goddamn the whole box. box. <laughs> right. Deep I wouldn't wake up for like three days, probably. <laughs> but not a good one at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I don't like overdosing on marijuana edibles. That is my least favorite kind of... I don't like... I, I would assume it would, be, it would be similar to overdosing on like sleeping pills kind of thing. Just where you fucking want to wake up. So you, you don't die. Yeah, you just so, think you are. Because I would assume they're also all experience. sativas. Or? I took a bunch of... That's a good question. Or indicas, rather. Indicas, I think, yeah. That's what I meant to say. I took a bunch of really cheap edibles that my buddy bought for me when I had just got all four of my wisdom teeth taken out. He was trying to be a bro, but he also didn't, I knew he didn't have any fucking money at the time, but so it was nice of him, but he got the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest shit that they had at the dispensary for some edibles. They're mm-hmm. like little capsules, you know? And I was like, okay. So I just stashed them in a drawer and then like mo- months later I was feeling better and I was like, I had just gotten a VR headset and I was like, dude, I'm going to fucking take one of those edibles and I'm going to play VR and it's going to be rad. You know? <laughs> so I, I did and I'm in VR sweating my ass off because I'm killing people with swords and shit and uh, like 45 minutes goes by and I don't feel shit, you know and I'm like, I've done edibles many times before so I was like, eh, they're only 10 milligrams. I probably like I took like an 80 milligram taffy one time from a medical place and I was just fine so I was like, I'll take like two more. <laughs> so, oh, <boy. laughs> so I took another couple more and then uh, about a half hour goes by and then I'm like, I started feeling not stoned, but not good. 
I was like, Ugh. so I, I got out of VR because I was like, maybe VR is making me feel ill. Like maybe that's not the the move. And then I like my left arm starts hurting and I'm getting tunnel vision and my heart is racing and oh, no. I'm sweating <laughs> and I'm like staring at myself in the mirror like. I'm about to fucking have a heart attack and die. Like I'm, I fucked, I fucked myself up. They they messed up the edibles, obviously, and I'm dying. It's like <laughs> one in the morning at this point. I was living with a roommate. Neither of us really liked each other that much. It was just kind of an attack of opportunity thing. Mm-hmm. So I go upstairs. <laughs> I found on his bedroom door. I'm like, bro. He's like, what? And I was like, you got to take me to the hospital. He's like, what? And I was like, I'm having a heart attack. You got to take me to the hospital. <laughs> He's like, or not. Yeah, he goes, he has no idea that I'm fucking dosing myself with edibles in the basement and playing VR, you know? So he's like, oh, f- all right, dude, hang on. So he gets up, gets dressed, we get loads me in the car. And we drive all the way downtown. And I'm like right in front of the hospital and I'm like, dude, take me home. <laughs> he's like, what? No. I was like, no, seriously, dude, take me home. I'm not going in there. He's like. Well, we should probably at least go in and check. And I was like, nope, you won't be able no. to drag me into the doors of the oh hospital. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he like, He's like, I am getting I a new room. I just reality that I'm, I'm absolutely just baked out of my brain. <laughs> I told him. I was like, dude, full disclosure, I took a bunch of edibles, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that hopefully made it a bit more endearing. He's like, all right. He back home, I've been and in. I remember just, like, laying on the linoleum in the kitchen, like, fuck. <laughs> As your roommate's packing up his shit, like, <laughs> oh, I'm a new. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like so, so much yeah fun. yeah you so, go back home and he's like i would Can much I have rather one of those sleep out in the woods with bears that's yep, a lot more for exciting. sure 100 percent. that was like uh almost the last time i ever touched edibles i had one once since then it was thankfully i didn't have a heart attack and die but no shit yeah. i've had a few experiences but i don't think that they can make them look like children's can't they used to make them look just like i remember when the when the marijuana laws were first changed they tried to do edibles and they looked like gummy bears and gummy worms and shit like that yeah, i don't I think they can like do that little, anymore one of those fireballs you know the hard candy fireballs that yeah. are spicy it oh. was exactly the same Fuck. <laughs> yeah you can i mean I'll, I'll i'll tell a story real quick uh i founded spokane hemp fest with a bunch of cool guys cool guys and one cunt uh <laughs> in 2003 or some shit a long time ago and there was one guy he was a grower he was really well known. I didn't know that much about him, but he was really well known to a lot of the activists and stuff. And he just for fun, he was one of our, they were all volunteers. He brought cakes and pastries that were all medicated. And it was the most tasty cake I've ever eaten in my fucking life. And I've worked (laughs) this festival all day long. So it could have been, you know, I'm hungry. I need to eat and stuff, but it was the best tasting cake I've ever had. And then I was no good for the rest of the event either. So I was just like in another world. He's like, this. Is, he's like, Zach, you've been working hard. Here, have this. And I and I'd never been that fucking high. And it's at an event that I was in charge of. I was just like in, in our biggest like, riverfront park in downtown. Zach, what do we do? I don't know about what. <laughs> the thing I just explained to you twice. I don't remember. <laughs> I was. I remember thinking, I'm so thankful that Roadkill, who we've interviewed here, who we talked about here, and he's been on my show on Scatcast. I'm so thankful he's our MC because you because I do oh, yeah. some MC stuff between yeah. it. I was like, oh, thank God he's here, and he was eating that shit too, and it didn't phase him at all. <laughs> I don't know how it doesn't phase people. Like, it's fucking amazing. But anyway, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't imagine. And now when I get the edibles, it's like this is 20 years behind this guy, where it's like it tastes like weed. It shouldn't taste like weed. This guy made the best cake. I've had great spaghetti that was medicated, where it tasted like spaghetti, mm. and then later really? you're like in the coma. <laughs> You know, in the fetal position in the corner. But anyway, back to the nicotine yeah. toothpicks. So anyway, fuck the FDA. Fuck the FDA. <laughs> so ba- I don't know if we've fully explained, but they're challenging them. And w- what we've been told through, you know, being customers and whatnot, they said that uh, hopefully they'll be back no later than six months from now because the FDA is reviewing a bunch of things. And that's just going off uh, on their uh, their page. Mm-hmm. The, I almost want to, you know, I, our, I don't know how big our audience is, but it'd be nice to start a little campaign and say, it's not like the government's going to listen to us, but it'd be like, especially not the FDA, unless, right. unless there's a way we could do this. We just have to give them a shitload of money. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. And then they'll approve whatever we tell them to. That's right. That's how that works. Fuck. That's exactly how the FDA works. Glory to the system. <laughs> Glory to the system. So That's how Pfizer does it. That's how we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I wish there was something that we could do to say, you know, to support this company because it's it's only done good things to me. I don't know well, if, if you have the means, you can go buy a ship a shitload. That's what we're they, doing before they can. Yeah, that's, yeah. What that's we're my doing. plan is to get through six months. 
And yeah. And now the other thing I don't. This wanna... isn't a pump and dump scheme, I promise. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. It's like they're like, oh, we got them now. We got them. Yeah. We got podcasters helping us. We're gonna fucking get some money and get get out of here. Go to Mexico and live it up. Well, well, and also they actually. They have other toothpicks too that are non nicotine. Mm-hmm. The energy um, picks or whatever, right? Yeah, well, they have yeah they have energy picks and then just flavored picks as well. Um, but they're, but they're two different websites. Um, that they never did link their nicotine picks with the other ones, and I think again it was that whole FDA thing because Probably, the other yeah. two are non nicotine and this one is nicotine. But there yeah there are there they have two other toothpicks with great flavors um, that you can get there too. Because I, I I will buy the non nicotine sometimes. Yeah. Nice. Just to kind of, well, it, it just kind of, it just kind of broke my heart when I heard that because of like all you guys that are listening that have told us that you're like it's working for you, yeah. you know. And I'm like, fuck, like what do you <laughs> now? You just gotta like revert for six months, like that's some mm-hmm. bullshit. Hey, yeah. man, but you know what? Exactly. Like, like, I mean, this sucks. It's bullshit. But it's a challenge in life. But what, yeah, when it comes when it comes down to the individuals that I'm talking to, anybody that's trying, dude, it's just a challenge. Accept yeah, it. Accept exactly. it. Exactly. Make some decisions and figure something out, but don't fucking go back. Yeah, you're too please. far in now. Think about it like a video game. You've already played really hard, and you've gone level after level. It's course it's going to get harder. The longer you go at things, even I mean, you may quit smoking and you conquer that. Life will do something else crazy to you later. <laughs> it's just how levels of games work, right? Exactly. I mean, challenges are great. That's kind of something I was thinking about. That again, bear hunting, going up and down these hills, uh, baiting. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just naked chef in the woods. Baiting. Just baiting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was baiting naked, too. Hell, yeah. I was in my boots with a little backpack on. I, I'll be honest. I usually bait naked. Well, yeah. 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 Just really? not in the woods. Yeah. With your boots on. Huh? With a bear watching. I mean, bear voyeurism baiting in the woods. So if it's... Okay. I'm carrying <laughs> Find bags that on of Pornhub. bread and, and <laughs> gallons of deep fryer grease. I... I don't have available hands. I mean, it's not a bad idea. You got loot. Sure. Yeah. yeah I do have loot. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Dirty, nasty, year old deep fryer grease. Oh, God. Can you imagine? I can imagine. Yeah. I know, I know what that shit smells like. Yeah. I've had it on my boots. Anyway, coming up those hills, it doesn't matter how many times I go up and down those things or, you know, get used to the elevation from here. It is a motherfucker climbing up those hills, but. It's such a reward every time you just get to that top where that your your body feels it when you you know you're going you, you've climbed the hill and there's just that dopamine hit mm-hmm. in your brain whether you recognize it or not your body just gets to ah oh, relax we made it our muscles get to mm. you had a good little workout your heart's going a little bit and and there's all that dopamine going off I mean seek for that in life all the time and it's that's why when you're already working on something and there's a there's a bump in the road or a challenge just look at it that way it's mm-hmm. just another thing to get through that you get to win mm-hmm. you know i'll piggyback on that a little bit too and say that i i've been drilling myself a lot on trusting my intuition you know living by my gut because it does more efficient thinking in the moment than my brain tends to um but i try to watch for things that I would consider to be signs that my behavior needs to change, you know, Mm -hmm. like external likes. And it's, I mean, if you're, whether you're a spiritual person or not, I think that, you know, there are moments in life where you just kind of, you'll, you'll look at them and you go, Hmm, maybe this is an indication that I should, I should alter whatever this is, you know? And so Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe this is your moment to where it's like, Oh, you never thought to try these toothpicks. And then these three fuckwads on a podcast convinced you to give it a shot. And then now the rug's getting pulled out from under you. Maybe that's your fucking sign to just test yourself and see what happens, yeah. you know, and you fuck it, it. It, it, it. The worst that can happen is you fail and then you can do it again, but mm-hmm. you know, you won't, you, you'll definitely fail if you don't try. So mm-hmm. that'd be, that's my input. Absolutely. You know, I want to mention, cause you had like the, a huge high or several huge highs during this, last uh you know excursion yeah. and you and i just had a fucking massive high shade and playing a show and pick oh, out the park yeah. yeah and so i don't know if this happened to you or if it's happened yet since you're fresh back that much dopamine uh when you got like a few a thousand people or whatever a bunch of people and and getting in touch with nature like that and feeling you know uniquely like that it's such a high that I was reading just the other day because I got really low after Pig Out in the Park. Even though, you know, Skatcast is just the most fun thing I've ever done. You're and and my band is, is in the best. Yeah. <laughs> I got so high 
and you know, my kitty died. I've talked about that for four weeks or three weeks in a row now, but it, it, it was one of my very best friends on the earth and yeah. it was, it's still hard to reconcile with. And it's like, I got so low and then I started to read about it. I'm like, that's not normal for me, you know? And, uh, I usually am kind of even in my head most of the time. I get pretty low sometimes, mm -hmm. but I, I don't get that high either. I kind of stay normal. So when we don't get to play those shows like we used to as much, just because the last couple of years, but I started to read about it and it's like, it's such a big part of our, of our biology to go from our body reacting to this thing we got to do and we're about to face it and we face it and, da, da, da. and then you're like, where do you go from there? And you have to go down and you have to go. And it's kind of a crapshoot as to how far down you'll go. And it, I, cause I mean, I feel like I'm pretty mentally healthy most of the time. I definitely have major challenges and stuff, but I was surprised at how low I went where I was like, holy f I, I lost some energy. I lost some kind of drive for a day. Yeah. And it was like, holy fuck. I mean, it was a fun experience, but usually, I mean, we've played bigger shows. We played, you know, we've done lots of things. We've, I wouldn't say bigger, but we've done shows like that many times. And I don't usually crash that low because we usually we have something else to look forward to right afterwards or something. Yeah. But I'm not sure what it was. Did I went through did the you same experience thing. that well, stuff? I went through the same thing with Pig Out, except the next day I kind of kept the high going because I went to see Thrown Out Bones over, oh, yeah, yeah. over you know, the mountain and I had a great, and then they like spent the night. So I just like kept like that energy going, right? Which made it worse because <laughs> I mean, it was great, but like after that, like they <sighs> left and I was back to the grind like immediately. Like I didn't leave myself any transition time, and then I just kind of went like, Whoo, and then they hit me up and they're like, hey, blah, we just tested positive for COVID. Hope you don't get sick. Sorry, <sighs> you know, and then I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick and I'm depressed. That's what happens when you roll around with the thrown out bones? <laughs> they got you know sinew and they're wet. I don't know. Sorry, they're great though. You guys should check them out. Yeah, thrown out bones. Sh shameless of, plug for my friend's band, Thrown Out Bones. One of the most fun bands to see live yeah, ever. They're I super love it. fucking awesome. Yeah, That's the drummers, a amazing. Was I'd that? I'd never heard of them before. I wanted to listen yeah. to them. Yeah, they're good shit. We consider them brother sister band. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, do, did you have you felt any of that yet? Well. Have you come down now that you've come back to see? I do. It's always weird, particularly when it's over a week being gone and particularly not being around anybody really. Um, that coming back, just being around, you know, normal buildings or in neighborhood setting or just seeing people mingling around is always strange for about a day. Strange how? I, it's just does it piss you off? You're like, fuck you. Fuck yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's it's a different it's scatter. No, bitches. It's not that. It's not fuck you, but it's just <laughs> it's just awkward. You know, it just reminds me that I'm you know just not out here by myself anymore. And yeah, and uh, obviously it's not as pretty to look at. It right being out out in the woods is really where I enjoy being the most. And of course, this trip I got spoiled with warm weather. It was smoky, but it was warm, and that's nice. And you know, I don't like cold or wet weather just as much as anybody else but i have the clothes for it so i can do it but jeff hates the wind was, so much yeah, this guy wind. Wind he can he, my fan. you can rain on him and snow on him and shit but if it's windy out when, when you were still in the police force you come to my house all the time when you're in your oh god yeah it's windy and you're just out. like fuck, fuck i can hate the wind just you can't yeah. prepare for it there's no. really there's, there's nothing no way you to can do for it yeah you can <laughs> you, there's nothing really that you can do to really stop the wind no it's just fucking irritating <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get, you got digress. Me all fired up. I love <laughs> well, let's get um, so yeah, coming back home, it, it is weird. I mean, there's so much shit for me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a when I get home, I'm really bad at like taking a minute to say hi and just chilling out and and you know giving hugs and it just kind of checking a couple things. I got to start unpacking right away, and I've got a way that I do it and an idea what I need to get done, you know, there, and there's stuff I'll say for the next day, but there's things that have to get done. But then I guess when I get done with that, people that unpack then I, immediately I crash, after, but I'm tired. I've heard that people that unpack immediately after a vacation are serial killers. Just so you know, <laughs> that's probably true. Wow. I do that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm surrounded by serial well, killers I'm, and I'm I myself. Always, I've always killer. done that. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. So yeah. you guys, you guys might want to check yourselves. I have a, the, my reason is very simple. It's because I'm, I'm using the last of my energy. Cause I know it's once I stop, after I've been on a trip, it doesn't matter. Trips make me tired. Vacation mm -hmm. recharging is a bunch of bullshit in my opinion. But <laughs> I think, you know, I said, once I stop, I'm, I'm going to be fucking in stop mode for a minute. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to get it all done right. right now so that I don't have to stop. And then in about 
six hours or tomorrow look at it and go fuck, fuck, fuck yeah. you fuck you right well <laughs> you see know? that's the exact same mentality when you've like you've had your fun with a body you, you cut <laughs> well, it up and did the thing the responsible but thing now you gotta do. dispose it's of the it. responsible thing to do you don't want to dig the hole now that you've done all the stuff well, that you made don't, it you don't a mess yeah. do you fucking cook in your kitchen and not clean it up right after right you want to put the head in a hole somewhere or at least in a fridge <laughs> i don't know <laughs> all right so well, yeah so yeah i, I mean i guess but so, I think if so, protect yourself when you get real high. Know that there's going to be a low coming. It's kind of what I was going from, and, right. and it's like you just got super high, bro. Right. Well, so, and one of the one of the careful. ways to combat that coming back to everyday life or something or real high, like, that's why I work out. That's huge because that's probably you, the best thing you, you can do. Can keep those endorphins up. Yeah, and you force it. Mm -hmm. there, it doesn't even if you're in a pissy mood, you're going to force those things because your body's like, oh, I've got oxygen now and my blood's flowing. Yeah, so that is kind of a cheat code. Yeah. If uh, yeah. Anyway, so what, what comes up or what goes up must come down. It's just a natural thing. Uh, if you're looking for all the fun things in life and you're, you're chasing after dopamine like a lot of us do, be prepared that you're going to feel weaker. You're going to feel less than you did before when you met that goal or had that fun. And it's okay because you'll probably bounce back. I bounce back I, after I two, three days. I think it's more than okay. Good. I think it's a good thing. I it certainly is part of our survival probably. Yeah. I certainly exert way more energy when I'm in the mountains than I do in town. For I sure. Oh, I bet. So, and, and the, that's what I love about bear season too is that summertime's my fuck off time. It's I can, I don't follow a diet. I work out and everything, but I usually put on ten to fifteen pounds every summer. And then bear season, red robin. I I, I lose about eight <laughs> to ten pounds every bear season. And then I start dropping down for the rest of the it's all the that rest baiting. Of the time. Yeah, it just baits it. All out. that baiting. <laughs> Fun. All right, well, fuck this thing was our FDA thing. I think I don't know if we technically said fuck the FDA, but fuck the FDA for well, taking away something. I think something. we did, but just for good measure, fuck the FDA. Fuck the FDA. For real. All right, I, we had another fun thing that we wanted to talk about. Not that the nicotine picks that are helping all of us going away is a fun thing, uh, but jerking off in the woods is a fun thing. The flat earth people. <laughs> and this works yeah. out good for, we've got a lot of Seek the Ice Walls folks uh, going on for Well, Sky that's Expo. an original thing. We, no podcast has ever talked about flat earth. <laughs> Never, ever. We're the first ones to do it. That's right. Well, I, I want to say Angus Blackburn Jr. took his own take on it. He has his own take on oh, it. We're going to find the Ice Walls, motherfucker. Go get them. I hope you do. But let's actually, let's talk about the flat earth people. They are fucking, they are awesome. They are entertainment, like, grade B. I'm not actually grade know, I don't actually grade know a flat B. earther. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I don't really actually know a flat earther. Uh, I don't I think mean, I other know. Other than Angus. Right. I don't That's think a, I know in the, f on, in the flesh. I, I think I... Yeah, I, I always thought it was really kind of a joke. I do, don't I? Fuck. I but, but there is I actually people that believe that, that shit, though, right? What's that? But, like, seriously, people believe that a shit. A lot, yeah. right? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Absolutely. Like, a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, I watched. I watched a uh, Deni I denial is a better drug than fentanyl. Well, check it out though. <laughs> when you get in a little tube on the internet, conspiracy theories are the same way, and these are a lot of the same people. They just don't believe stuff. You just get stuck in a tunnel. I mean, ideology is the thing. I want to talk about that later. Right. Conspiracy theorists have a kind of ideology too, and they just—it's just being a contrarian, really, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what my point is there. But it is. They, though, you're right. So that that actually that's so uh, that leads it right into something I was going to say, and I'm going to hijack your your thing. Do it because I lost <laughs> my train of thought. Uh, there's there's Baton. there's a there's a thing, um, that can that can send you down a rabbit hole into entertaining any conspiracy theory, and if you've ever sampled this you know what the fuck i'm talking about but i hear a lot of people regardless of what the conspiracy theory is they will go well how do you know for sure just because somebody told you how do you know for sure just because right. it was in a book anybody can write a fucking book you know like you just start going and it's like what you're saying being a contrarian where it's just like how do you know how do you know that math has anything to do with science how do you know right just because somebody said it does right somebody who called themselves a scientist it's like okay well but, isn't okay, that kind of what how do you know you're awake right with now all the time <laughs> it is a in lot. society now a yeah. lot yeah. and there's really and that's just a that's a it's a shitty way to have a conversation because then you can't you can't set a premise. It's impossible to set a premise, therefore it's impossible to have any sort of productive 
discourse. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's like okay, well, so we have to we have to make some well, there's some reasonable assumptions about in life, reality. right? You have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. Yeah, you don't have to say that you're an anti-fascist. That's a default setting. We mm-hmm. can pretty much assume right. everybody's an anti-fascist. You don't have to except put for it on people your, that are fascists. on your page. Yeah, yeah <laughs> except for that. You know what I mean? Historically, <laughs> like, there was a need for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I. Uh, have a love-hate relationship with the flat earth theory and people that entertain it because I love to hear them try to explain it because the rationalizations are mind-bending they to are. me. They are. They are. And I find it it's morbidly fascinating to me. And I'm not... I don't want to come across like I, I, I fucking know. I have the answers. And I'm you're basically all Neil deGrasse Tyson. Stupid, uh, but well. I do. And you flat earthers are wrong. I'm sorry. But <laughs> well, there, there's a lot. But of I real love to hear people talk about it, like to the point where I'll be working and I'll listen. To, I'll listen to people debate and argue about it in a live setting. I'll, I'll just listen to it. I did this the other day for like three fucking hours while I was working, and my blood pressure went up like the, <laughs> steadily the whole time. So you listen this to guy, people debate. I'll give you an example. That's funny. I'll give you an example. This this guy well, it's cause was because you're fighting, there. slapping him. Sorry. This yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The ether. This guy's point, and he kept coming back to it and, and would not be dissuaded. He said, <laughs> he said, why is it that the horizon is always at eye level? That's that was his whole that was his whole argument. He said, and no matter where you are, if you're high up in the air or you're down on the ground, if you look out at a distant horizon, it's always at eye level. I'm the, like, what the fuck the are you talking is huge, about? Dude, it's a big ass planet. And, so you can't. More to the point, no, it isn't. <laughs> like fucking, I start, I was like, I wonder if this motherfucker yeah. like is he looking at different shit? You know, so like, I know, I've never heard I'm, that I'm question. I'm outside for days after that. Do it. I defy you. Go outside and see if the horizon is always at eye level. I promise you. And I don't even make promises fucking ever. It's the second time I've done it on the podcast, so maybe I'm a liar. <laughs> You're gonna get the but fucking reputation now. You fucking, it's not always at eye level, and I don't know why. Like he just is going around in his life. They he's like, it. he's like, that proves it. Somebody said it oh, once. Dude, that proves it. And he went into this whole thing about the way how perspective works. You know how like it's you know the ground is if it was going away from you, it would seem higher up because of the way your eye processes it. Like, and there is some science behind that, right? But it does it doesn't correlate to what he's fucking right. talking about. You know the <laughs> funny thing about this that runs across my mind where well this conversation is going on is like. Whether it's round or flat, I honestly don't fucking care. I'm still gonna live my life. I don't give a shit. Right. To put to base I would your love life to now. find out that it is flat. Honestly, that would, yeah. <laughs> It'd be the big that joke, would thrill yeah. me. Well, no, Shaden. seriously, if there was a fat a, a fucking fat ass ice ring around the frisbee that we live on, well, Shaden, and that's the whole deal. I'd like, to, or, I'd like to let both of you guys know. Scarecast.com. There are four <laughs> levels from ten dollars to a hundred dollars. You get your seat on the Illuminati scum. I'm already, I'm already booked, dude. Get in there, baby. <laughs> get in there, both I'm on. Of you. No, I'm on. We're gonna find out. I will, I will go. I'm the master I'll go on the of the boat. To find that's, the ice right. I just someone's got to catch them fish. That's right. You guys didn't think I was talking about something else, did you? I, <laughs> I for sure did. I knew for sure. I don't understand why there are still ships that ship things around the world via traveling on the ocean. Why is it not that someone who cruise upon one of these ships Just can't come guy. out and go, hey, I went far enough in that direction around the things the map said would be there, and I ended up back in the, where I started. Whoopsie-daisy. Because like, at this point... <laughs> In our evolution <laughs> and science, it doesn't even really seem like it needs to be fucking said. That's why. But well, apparently sure. it does. It's, well, <laughs> it should be. It's kind of one of those default settings. We know the world is round. But I'm wrong, apparently. Yeah. Well, well, and all the pictures of Earth from space are propaganda. They're all they're, well, of course, they're fabrications. Yeah. Well, some of them are actually Duh. like images made to, to be better sure. perceived and stuff. And yes. so that's where they're like, well, there's some truth in that. And it's like, yeah, but they're fucking, God damn it. But, yeah, yeah, but not, the, of, not of our planet. Like, I mean, yeah, they enhance the color and shit. But right. It's... <laughs> Or, or they might put it together like it's, the satellite doesn't take the full picture, and so they composite it together. It, but they're like, "That's a fabrication." It's like they're, it sounds to me like yeah, you somebody know when you do panorama doesn't... mode on your phone that does the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a cheat. It's that's how the technology works, so we can see it. Yeah, they don't understand what what they're looking at. They don't understand what they're being described. They don't understand the re- <laughs> further what they're being described, so they just don't understand any of it. Well, right. and we we should probably consider our audience because I know a lot of you guys out there are time suckers as well. So like, very they, smart they, audience. They did they did, uh, they did a way deeper dive. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Although that was that, an early on one the for Dan. One. Yeah, a, but yeah. he did a but, good job for sure. But dude, they're like the the fucking. <laughs> Some of the shit that that people that are really into the flat earth thing have done is 
awesome. Like the mm. dude that built his own fucking rocket and yes. went up not one time. There but, goes my hero. But two times. <laughs> and then died the twice time, and right? then he died yeah. the second time. Is that time. that farmer? Yeah. Farmer I think slash it was rocket scientist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. actually made a movie about that. It was uh, Billy Bob Thornton was in it, wasn't he? I don't remember. Pretty sure. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that oh, it was inspired. Oh, an actual movie. I don't yeah, know yeah. that it was, was it inspired Billy Bob? by that. It was him, I thought I that was a story. Yeah. I did the, the Backyard Rocket it, guys. Yeah, 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 it sounds about right. Maybe it was Maybe Billy I'm wrong. I don't know. So there's a guy, there's another actor that I think looks exactly like Billy Bob Thornton, who's also a very good actor, but he's not Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> and it might be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton. But, uh, but I don't know that that movie was directly related to I this think guy earlier than yeah than but this, but this still stuff. the guy was a true story which i think is just fucking awesome like he's like you know what i'm gonna go just find out i'm kinda, gonna go up there and see if i can see that curve or I not i respect that i do too man that guy's that guy's a fucking that guy's a fucking hero as far as i'm concerned he's contrarian to the point he's like i'll prove it for myself and it's like okay but you <laughs> could probably read some papers yeah. on some scientific stuff hey man at, at a certain point, if you gotta if you gotta see yeah. it with your own fucking eyes, and that's what it takes, then good, God on, bless you, you. good on you for sacking God up and committing, speed, <laughs> motherfucker. Seriously, but you know, to take this point a little, uh, kind of with what you were saying and what you were saying, it's kind of fake. It kind of came across like the birds aren't real for a second, even though birds aren't real came later. It, to me, I was like, well, some of the birds aren't real because they're fucking cameras. That's true. CIA. We've learned that already. <laughs> but it, but to me, it was like. I think the most seductive thing, and this is the problem with these videos, Alex Jones documentaries are seductive too. Like well before people knew anything about Alex Jones and Sandy Hook and all that stuff, he was making underground videos that went around like fucking everywhere. Everybody I knew in the music community was like, you gotta check out Alex Jones, you know? <laughs> and it was all these like road to tyranny and fucking fat freedom to fascism and all these fucking titles and stuff. They're very seductive because the production. I mean, we are media trained creatures. We know a good, this is where the, the powerful music goes. This is where we, we want to make a cut and cut them out of context here and do this. The flat earth videos are seductive. The first ones I saw where I'm like, I got to see what this is. I went and watched a documentary and I think he was the first guy that like, he was the birds aren't real, you know, patient zero guy, I guess for flat earth. <laughs> His shit was really slick. Yeah. And that's what I think a lot of people were like, well, this is slick. Yeah. I, there's no fucking thing telling me that the world's round slick like this. Yeah. That's fucking shit I learned in school from the fucking Illuminati scum and the teachers and their liberal agenda, <laughs> all that shit. And it, it just is seductive. And I kept watching a couple of them at a time. And, you know, I had zero, I always have an open mind ish, you know, but yeah. I was like, there's, I'm not going to believe this stuff because he's quoting the Bible at me or whatever. But <laughs> he was trying to throw science out there and, and 90% of us have no scientific literacy and most of us that are even scientifically literate a, a little bit certainly aren't literate in whatever science they're talking about. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. ge geography or uh, geology, all these things. So exact point to the geography thing. There was another video clip that I watched of a guy who was like, they're laughing at you, bro. He was pushing the flatter thing. He's like, they're laughing at you. If you look at the the UN's logo, the UN's oh, yeah, yeah, logo yeah, yeah. is flat earth. Yeah. It's flat earth. It's I'm right. like, it's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it is it is the globe made flat. flat. Earth type of, it's, a, it's called a map. <laughs> it's kind of an artistic uh, representation. The map is not the, the land. There's actually a name for for that specific map that they use, <laughs> believe it or not, but he's like, they're laughing at you, bro. Right. It's right there as, in your face. As he's talking about fucking water mountains and how water oh. doesn't go up, and that's why the Mississippi River doesn't make sense, and that fucking uh, water droplets are, aren't round. I, got, uh, I wait, got, wait, 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 wait. The Mississippi River is that because it flows north? Yeah. They're like, that doesn't make north sense. North is up yeah. automatically. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. When I, I did, can tell you, I've gone north and gone downhill like a lot. <laughs> I know. Like a whole bunch. There's like mountains up time, there and shit. Every time I've come back from Canada to here, came, my place I was at in Canada was mountains, and I came here and it's mostly plains. Exactly. <laughs> that might not be the most popular argument of the flat earthers because I think a few flat earthers are like, don't say that one. Yeah, quit Stop. it. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop damaging it. our credibility. The, just go water mountain. Water mountain is better. You know, but. They, I, I went when I did the uh, episode twenty two of David Angus's the TED Talk for uh, Angus's TED Talk on flat slash or well realm slash hollow earth. Uh, <laughs> I went and I found I listened to like four or five documentaries. I read a couple blog posts from like the central people that were given credit for starting this and stuff. And I couldn't believe that their main arguments were some of these things: water mountains, the the, the water droplet thing. It's like. 
what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> How is that puppy? I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? Where did you even get that? <laughs> and I thought drugs, baby. <laughs> exactly. It's just insane. Cocaine what is what is, is, is the argument? Of a drug. The, they, they said they're not round. The water. Oh, I don't even know. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm you're on the spot. The, yeah. You're on the spot. Let's see, uh, this is a they test. can't get the concept of gravity and the tear shape. It, basically, it was kind of like it was tied to how if you were to take a tennis ball and you got it wet and you spun it, that it would go everywhere. And it's like, why isn't the Earth doing that if it's going fucking thirteen thousand oh. miles per hour and this and that, this and that, and the water droplets are around. And it's like, what? So I, I didn't. So, I, so the water would essentially spin off the Earth because the Earth was spinning. But if it was so a frisbee, yeah. it would spin off too. Except that the ice walls are holding it in. There, I guess right? so. They're strong ice. How come all the How so. come all the water isn't just shoved up against the ice walls all the time? I mean, con- well, centrifugal it, force. It splashes off that and it comes <laughs> back and would go the Wait, opposite way. I actually don't know the answer to this. Does flat Earth people think that the so it's a disc, right? It has to yeah. be, right? If yep. it's flat, it's a well, disc. It's more of a round shape. A realm. I have two questions. <laughs> I have two questions. About the realm. Okay. One, what's on the other side? <laughs> a turtle. <laughs> awesome. The hollow so, earth shell two, turtle. Two, <laughs> two, um, what, uh, do they think that it spins or does it not spin? That's a great question. I have no idea. I don't either. I think they, I no, want to know. Actually, I think they believe that the, that the satellites that we have are kind of spinning around the, uh, what the fuck is the word? But just outside of the little dome that is us, because they—I I saw one, and I don't think they all believe this. So it's where they flat. Hang it's, like a, it's like a fucking snow globe. Yeah. Ah. Oh. The firmament. That's what they call it. The firmament. So the well, sun. That is, the a word sun for, that is a word for the sky. It's yeah. a biblical it's a, word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the realm shape is a biblical word. So that's why a lot of this goes back to the Bible, where I'm like, you guys, come on. Oh, so it's Jesus's fault. I feel like a lot of things are. <laughs> I feel like this is just another laundry list thing where it's like, whatever misinterpretations of the Bible have happened, there's another one. So what you're saying is we can blame the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, no, all only roads, one of them. <laughs> all roads lead to Jerusalem. God dang it. <laughs> all right. So flat earth, I mean, it's seductive. If you're not, if you don't care if what it's you think seductive. is true, it is seductive. Did you say Alex Jones was seductive? I did. I, I, be, if, I believe if you're it's young. His voice. And it's his gravelly voice. Yeah. I think that is attractive. Kind of reminds know, me of my grandma that used to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unpopular opinion. Can't I give grandma a kiss. <laughs> I, I would, like we were I, saying earlier. I, he's a cartoon character that yep. I think the world would be poorer without. Yep. I, I think he's fucking off his nut sometimes. Yep. But I also think that it's popular to say that he's off his nut yeah. when there's when there's you're actually in your deep down in your heart on Christmas Eve. You're like, I believe what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever tell anyone that. I think that. the fucking frogs are gay, but I'm not going <laughs> to tell anybody. That guy's crazy. You're like, I read an article in, in Discover magazine that the frogs did get turned gay from the plastic in the water. And they actually did. And they did. I mean, and Alex not, Jones not is the, wearing a Not the most somewhere. accurate way to frame no. what happened, but <laughs> technically, they did. Yes. The frogs were gay. Alex Jones has a lot of things wrong with him, but I would rather live in a society with 100 Alex Jones than you know, zero. If, if you had if you had Alex Jones, but he had the delivery of, like, fucking Jordan Peterson, mm-hmm. or... Or um, fucking even like if he had the delivery of like Milo Yiannopoulos, even mm-hmm. just somebody who's just extremely fucking articulate and measured in the way that they talk, mm-hmm. he'd probably be the preeminent. Like so, people would be like, I f- he would be a cult leader. Yeah, quite well, has, sure, he kind of was. Already, has yeah. he always? I mean, sound he like is. He is a cult leader, sort of. But has no. he always met, sound like he no smokes razor blades? Or so for a long time, he actually. <laughs> I listened to him tell a story of why he sounds that way. It was because he talks a lot. <laughs> it's exactly no, it's shouts exactly to that what you horn. think. It's exactly what you think. He was at a he was a at some rally yelling in somebody's face about I don't remember what it was. I'd have to look it up. But he was yelling in somebody's face and he yelled so hard that he tore his larynx like bad, like mm. to the point where he went to the doctor and they were like, I've never seen you have polyps the size of fucking Texas. I've never seen something <laughs> like this before. Like that's gonna, really trying we're to get gonna your fix it. And right you have there. to. Yeah. And so, like so I'm, I'm sure the guy was listening with open. So heart. he, no, fucking, right. so he well. fucking healed. And then, and then years later, he did it again. And tore it again, <laughs> and he had. He said, "I had to. I had to not talk for six fucking weeks, wow. which was really hard for me because I'm me." And he right. goes, "But the but the 
if I did talk, I could have torn it open and I would have had no voice forever. Wow. So that, so now I just sound like I've smoked a bazillion packs a day for my entire life. And he goes, I actually have like a little fucking turkey gobbler thing in my throat from like scar tissue and shit. So that's why I talked this way. Damn. <laughs> it was because wow. no he screamed, he screamed his, he screamed his throat apart <laughs> twice. See what happens when you take too strong of a stand on something. That's what I mean. You don't yeah. see fucking and Jordan might Peterson not screaming be right. about pretty much anything you ever. Don't. You know, so, you don't. Like, you do see him get emotional, though. Sure, I've seen him emotional a couple yeah. times that I've seen that man. Yeah. Uh, well, fuck flat Earth. I mean, I believe it. So that's yeah, the kind of foundation perfect. of it. Right. I believe in cool. flat Earth, and I think well, that we the should eyes go have there. it. Then it must be flat. <laughs> well, I do think it's seductive, um, just like Alex Jones, but just like the news is seductive. Just <sighs> you like know uh, you know what's ideologies. seductive about both of those things. I mm-hmm. think, in my opinion, and if I think if you're being honest with yourself, if you are either one of if you're disciples of either one of these things or something similar, stop it, knock it off. You need to be honest with yourself and admit that the seductive part about it is being able to feel and convince yourself that you know some shit that everybody else is either fooled on or doesn't know, so which powerful. makes you better than them. It's Absolutely. a drug. It's a drug. Yeah. It's a dopamine hit. And yep. if that's you, fuck you. Stop doing that. <laughs> Seriously. Like <laughs> with, with the utmost love, fuck you. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I, Nobody I, likes that. That's like the know-it-all in class. Who's like, the teacher told me the answer to the first question on the test, but I'm not going to tell you. It's like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to take your lunch money, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to, but now I feel like being a bully all of a sudden is your fault. <laughs> you brought out the inner bully in me. You know, I've said this once before here. Uh, if you're interested in conspiracy theories, have at it. There's good history to learn in there. Just like anything else, there's a lot of shit that you have to weed through to find things. But you have to be really scrupulous and diligent about caring if what you think is true, and, and, and you can dig in there. But again, I don't recommend if you're in if you're in the conspiracy world, kind of deep, and you're looking around and you're like, I'm watching David Icke videos or something. Lay off the weed, bro. Lay out. I'm serious. Like, <laughs> lay off the weed. Somebody t- I, and I said this before too. Somebody told me that they're like, if you're just watching all these videos and you're stoned sober up and see how you feel yeah <laughs> or, or at least there's that one thing or at least go do something completely learn something completely different yeah. but also probably the most important thing is fucking s- realize how serious you're taking yourself realize how, you're t- how serious you're taking the world and, yeah. and your role in it and how much sway you have in it and what you can do about it like knowing about conspiracy theories almost means nothing to your life like it doesn't help you it actually makes you more paranoid. It makes you a little less social and it makes you harder to talk to at parties and like, at fucking Thanksgiving. Hey, unless you meet a fellow conspiracy. Guy. Yeah. And then you yeah. can go you nuts. Marry that person. Best fucking time of your life. Marry that person. I think I would add on to that and say, and this is just something I school myself on constantly, but when you're approaching something that you don't for sure have all the fuck, even if you think you have all the answers on it, anytime you're approaching something, operate on the base assumption that you're probably wrong. Yes. Serious. And then, and, then so if, and then if you find out that you're less wrong than you assumed that you were, then fucking it. Good on you. Yeah. You're lucky. You're getting closer. <laughs> yeah. You're still probably wrong about some part of it, but you're getting closer. Yeah. If you operate that way, no matter what it is, no matter what you're doing, I, I you fucking approach. If you go to the gym and somebody's teaching you how to use a fucking piece of equipment, just assume that just assume that you're like probably not doing it right. You know, mm-hmm. like just always keep, try to maintain that level of humility and then just build, build upon it and go like, well, I know I'm not wrong about that piece of it because i tested it you know and then just build those grains of sand but it's good to just always operate on a base assumption that you probably don't have the answers yeah and to assume that what you're doing is like your mission isn't to be right about everything it's to get further from wrong humans are really bad about thinking that we know stuff we're just further from wrong that's what we keep getting closer to am i the only one that pretty much feels wrong about everything that's how I feel. I mean, I assume that i'm wrong i think that's like my deep held beliefs are it's it's an unavoidable side effect of learning more things the more you learn, the less you know, right? That's, Absolutely. That's the old uh, platitude. The smarter you get, the more you find out how ridiculously dumb you are. Yeah. And yeah. that's very true. And it's super valuable. Experience. You just got to yeah. realize it's not a heartbreaking thing. It's like, oh, I don't know shit about the world. Oh, that's okay. It's, it's actually, okay to say I don't know. The only, it's usually. The only part of you that cares about that's your ego, and that's not good for a whole lot anyway. I don't know. Yeah, I think, really. honestly, it's more refreshing and entertaining. To, be, to learn new to things? To just constantly just be like, yeah, fuck, I was wrong about that. Yeah. I mean, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. If you can't laugh at yourself. It, oh, yeah. Please, for the love of God, make fun of yourselves once in a what, while. What holds you back more than that? Uh, what holds people back more than them taking whatever thing it is that's fucking them, that they feel is fucking them, super serious and not finding humor in life? That, <laughs> I mean, I, I can't think of anything that holds people back more than actual physical things. All right. 
Flat Earth, I think we're done there. Nicotine picks, we're done there. Fuck the FDA. <laughs> uh, hey, did we mention fuck the FDA? I think we might have. Can we say it one more time? Fuck the FDA. Fuck, fuck the FDA. <laughs> that, that leads us to the reasonablest party, where I don't think we would have an FDA. I'm almost 100% certain we wouldn't have an FDA. Yeah, I'm, I'm very against the FDA. I'm very against outside people being able to fund the FDA primarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just seems like a way to uh, cheat. There's a lot of cheating potential within I using think, the government and big business. I think quality assurance is good, but when the history of your company is being founded to uh, take all of the traditional medicine that has existed for the entirety of the human race right. up until that point and say, hmm, no, no, none of that's uh, approved in our by our guidelines. But uh, these brand new pharmaceutical petroleum-based products that we made that cost lots of money, lots more money, and you can't grow them in your backyard. And we're super invested in. We approve of those. Yeah, because mm-hmm. because the the guy that you know pays our signs our paychecks <laughs> said that that's what we should approve. So we did. That's and they haven't really government. changed a whole lot. They've just gotten more sophisticated in the in their methods. From what I can tell, yeah, that's as still a, as a fucking you know, layperson with the internet who just tries to pay attention and looks at shit, but but uh, the, I mean the, the evidence is there. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you can you can go and look oh. into all, all these claims that I'm making. If you want to go look for yourself, you'll find exactly what I'm telling you. Yeah, there's a there's a revolving door between the FDA board of directors, the yeah, and shit, of, of you corp- know yeah. of of big pharmaceutical companies, CEO people or not necessarily CEOs, although in one case I think that was the case, but yeah. you know, uh the the board, the controlling interests of big pharmaceutical companies, also the controlling board members and of directors for the FDA. The argument for on the opposite side of that would be the experts in that industry would be those people, is what they're saying. Like that, to be a CEO, it's not just hey, Illuminati picks you. It's really a, a merit-based thing most of the time. But why is it the same company that does quality assurance on? I'm 100 against this. 100 percent against as, it. I'm as, just saying. As, no. the, as the you know, our food <laughs> and the things that we use to wash our clothes and uh, our fucking nicotine toothpicks that <laughs> taste like fucking sweet candy for children. Delicious things that I'm going to go and give to a toddler after yes. the show is over. As soon as I in, can. In defiance. I'm of giving the that, man. <laughs> I'm giving these fuckers out for Halloween candy. <laughs> <laughs> bitches get yes. addicted. I see what you're doing. We should try to steal man it, but I just I'm I'm very no. I feel I have such a negative bias. Against I do the too. FDA. But like. A lot of people will say things like, uh, you know, Wall Street, there's a bunch of Wall Street executives in the economic branches of the government, you know, in the Treasury True. Department stuff. And it's like, who else do you, who, I mean, who else would you have in there? The people that are doing, you well, want the bankers in there too? There's, there's a lot of corruption no, where, no matter where you look in that. I think so. But I mean, that's also a little bit, uh, that's also a little bit of, uh, you know, going to the other extreme because you won't convince me that there aren't, pro- there aren't professors of economics that aren't involved in either, either side of that equation. Oh, absolutely that would be right. More than qualified to do the job and they'd probably do it with a lot more integrity. Absolutely. You know, so. A thousandfold percent. I don't know what I'm saying. I that agree. That would be my answer to that. <laughs> what else you got? A thousandfold <laughs> percent, which is obviously how percentages work. But we brought up the reasonableness party. You brought up the, the two-party system. We were going to talk about that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think naturally we all kind of think, oh, two parties, we need three or four. And we talked about that recently. Yeah. You know how in European countries sometimes, or Canada, where you're from. Fuck yeah. You can be. You can have a tyrant that only has twelve percent or thirty percent of the uh, the votes yeah. or whatever. Fucking Trudeau, you're next on fuck that thing, buddy. Yeah, I'm buddy. coming for you. <laughs> but you have a thing where you found some information that made you think twice about the two party system. Yeah. So it was a claim that I heard this week of uh, just some guys on YouTube having some political banter, and I wasn't sure that it was going to be very valuable because it was two guys that agree with each other on most things, you know. So right. I was like, yeah, it's probably, but lots of softballs but one of them said something that because i've to give a little bit of background in most everything i think that variety is a good thing you know having having more available options is uh i mean that's a very free market minded stance to take Mm -hmm. on things and we've talked about that we're all fans of that in its purest form but this guy said that uh the way that We do it in America the way that it's been done in this experiment that we've been doing, which is a pretty young experiment in the grand scheme of the world. You know, things like monarchy and and parliamentary systems are a lot older. They've been done by a lot more people, you know, but the way that we do it, 
has always essentially been with a two-party system. Like we have other parties, mm-hmm. but they're really not. I mean, if you if we're being honest, it's a two-party game, mm-hmm. and the and the rest of well, the, it's, the rest it's of all the parties is a two-party game too. Though it is, yeah, they it work is together for very sure. much. So. You know, Absolutely. and and I've See always kind debate. of found that distasteful because I'm like, oh, okay, so then it's just you know which are you red or are you blue you know like it's it's black it seemed black and white to me and i didn't i don't like you know false dichotomies but this guy's point that he made he said the alternative to that is a parliamentary system where you have a, a bunch of different parties vying for power which technically we do in the united states but like i was trying to say those parties are really just pawns that are used by the primary two parties to siphon votes off of one or the mm-hmm. other, like because they they don't stand a chance. Or shouts you know? in the wind. Really. Yeah, yeah. But or why, or why it's just it, a protest. Vote. Why is yeah. it that yeah. they don't stand a chance though? Is it, it simply because of promotion? Yes. Uh, yeah. Through well, media, it's it's literally these two parties. If you you can't get in the debates, the presidential debates for one, uh, they have all the resources. <laughs> Republican or Democrats. What did and Ross control, Perot run? I don't remember. Was he, did he run as an independent? Yeah. Then yeah. he bought his way in. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So. And they had to do that. Right. And, they, and he didn't. <laughs> I don't know get if that's to, rightfully so or not. I was being an asshole. He was an interesting <laughs> guy. Ron Paul was an interesting example. Where I mean, he's a he's a libertarian running as a Republican, but he was voted into office several times as a Republican. And the Republican during the primaries, they did not like him. Like he said the opposite of what he said, libertarian stuff. And people were like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it woke up a whole bunch of young that's kids. That's for that backyard like, barbecues. Yeah, that's not, we don't want truth shit. And fucking, that's, we're, we're doing platitudes here, guy. And, and I kind of learned from them during like 08 where it was like they, they're literally just working. A, they, they won't let him debate, even though he has the highest numbers of money and, and percentage of people that like him. Even on C-SPAN, where they, it's a pretty open forum and shit. Like, he was super popular, and they they just tried to hide it, and they they changed the polls. They would even yeah. do that. And those are media companies and stuff, but well, the, media the media companies, companies are, are basically owned by the government. Are, they're, they're the fourth branch of government at this right. point. Yeah, they're know. the and I PR department get back into the what parties. You, yeah. We, I cut you off with what you were talking oh, about. Anyway, that, that's I was just fine. Wondering. I was I was meandering all over the fucking place to get to my point. But my my point is the claim that he made is he said he said the alternative to our our essentially what we have is a two party system. The alternative is a parliamentary system, which is exactly what we have in Canada where I grew up. And he goes, the issue with that is you get you you widely open yourself up to the risk of exactly what's happening in Canada right now, where you have a guy who's literally being a tyrant Mm -hmm. and and pushing every day closer to an actual dictatorship he's lost the plot and he's able to maintain that power with only 30 percent of the country saying yeah we'll vote for him right it's all it takes you know so he's like you don't even you don't even you don't your whole the majority of your country could be like fuck this this isn't what we want for our country but fuck you because it's a parliamentary system so you your voice means Right, that many percentage points less, which shows you, you know. in my mind, and you know where I'm going to go. It shows the obsolete nature of government. I mean, it's like that just doesn't work. If we're trying to make light bulbs light up, that's not how the light bulb lights. We have yeah. to figure out a new way. And yeah, and you know, I'm, is, I mostly but. agree with that. Um, we live in a practical world, though, so yeah, I know and like and the I'm reasonable like, party is kinda... about government. We have to use government because right. I'm not going to live in an anarchy system. Other than uh, that, we hang out as friends that way, and and all right. of our other major decisions. I think, but I think as as much as we can err on the side of that as possible. Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, yeehaw, let's go. I'm willing to compromise it, you know? with that but a little like, bit. But, but I'm I've the the older and hopefully wiser that I get, I start looking at things like what we talked about last time um, with the utility of organized religion. Mm-hmm. I personally find most organized religion to be distasteful Mm -hmm. but the mechanism that it is and the purpose that it serves as a as a cornerstone for societies Mm -hmm. i have a hard time denying the the actual utility of it you know like there's a use for it Mm -hmm. and i feel I, i feel like i'd be hypocritical in saying that the government isn't similar in that regard but that doesn't mean we can't change it. <laughs> right. right. I just know? am wondering what it has done. Like, you can point to things that religion has done. I mean, they literally are a good form of charity. A lot of hospitals around the world have been built by these charities, basically these Christian charities. Government, when they do charity, well, they, they are <laughs> not good at spending the money. They're not yeah. good at allocating the money. They're terrible at fucking collecting the money. They do it all the worst possible ways. And so it's, I don't know. 
just different that kind, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. Collecting, I had to you pick mean one taking, the taking taxes? Yeah, the money I mean, it's. I mean, doing. read the tax code and tell me they've made that clear for anyone. You yeah. have to go get a fucking three degrees to get through it. Well, but you're, you're fucked. You're also talking about Christianity specifically. There are other religions that I'm like, hey, I don't know what, sure, what good. Sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, even like say like. I mean, I'll be honest, like Islam to me is not the same as Christianity because it is an all encompassing religion that includes government and includes your morality. Yeah. And it's very much a uh, very strict system that I, I would never before. But when I mean, you look at some of the things they do, they get people off of drugs and like this is a nation of Islam, which is different than right. than Islam, the actual religion, I think, from my assessment. But they can make a lot of claims and they do, which is why. I'm like, oh shit, the loudest sons of bitches are usually the ones that are like, well, maybe check their claims. <laughs> but you, you can see a lot of good done there. Government, like, yes, they get money to people. And, and you know, people that are on some sort of health care that the government sponsors and they feel like they were taken care of and stuff, they'll probably give government the credit for that. They shouldn't, though, because yeah. all those things can happen but without I feel government. Like, but I feel like people, and maybe you and I don't, but I think the overwhelming majority of people probably do need something like that to put the, to put, to get, to like pay credit, you know, to put credit, give credit. That's the word I'm fucking groping in the dark for yeah. <laughs> to give credit to day. for things that they feel are beyond themselves. You know, like most people aren't, they, they think about things like the economy and they're like, that's fucking way bigger than my purview my scope doesn't include that you know mm -hmm. and i get that like i feel that way <laughs> honestly yeah, a lot of the time yeah, no matter yeah. how much you learn about it yeah big but time. but so i think there's this innate human desire to have something that is bigger than just jeff or that's bigger than just shaden or zach yeah. to to go that's 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 where i have to put that you know so it's like i need i need government to tell me what to do i need my god to tell me what to do or you know i need right, to or i need to i need to be able to give god credit for my dog not dying from cancer instead of the vet that i took my dog to right you know because that's just a dude i know his name I know, you know I know. so it's, it's <laughs> which, strange, which is strange but it's <laughs> you know i feel like you can't deny that aspect of people so i feel yeah, like but if the dog know, dies then it's the guy's fault. Then it's, it's the guy's fault. fault. And yeah. God works in mysterious yeah. ways. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. always fun. Yeah. I have, okay, so. Well, that's just, that's just mental acrobatics to rationalize your, your worldview, which everybody does, you so, know, to a certain degree. What about this proposal for the reasonableist party? Like, I respect the fact that people, we do like symbolism. We're very much that way. That's why we like the movies that we like and the stories that we like. And, and that's why we look up to people that we look up to and yeah, stuff. Yeah, we want archetypes. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, that's, we, that's we, it. We fucking crave them. But here's the thing, like. I mean, isn't that as why every country has a flag? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. It becomes a national... Here's the thing. I don't think we need government at all because I think it's absolutely, obsolete, gross, immoral, terrible, destructive. But the symbol of a king... Like, but this is one of the problems that Americans have with the president and the first family. Like, we shouldn't call the fucking president the f and, the, and the first lady the first lady and the first children and the first dog. That's <laughs> contrary to... Do people call it the first dog? I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. The first puppers? <laughs> the first goldfish. <laughs> the first doggo. <laughs> but it's, it's contrary. That's why we don't have knights, which, you know, I would be for knights. But uh, that's why we don't have knights in America. It's the same kind of thing. We don't... Having a king... Yeah, we do their secret service. Fair enough. No shit. Okay, okay fair Let's enough. Put some respect on their names. <laughs> <laughs> but as it like England, I, actually the best example is Japan. Japan, I don't know how long, I don't know their history that well, but they've had a royal family, an emperor family for like a thousand years. Yeah. And, and Japan society. And he's divine. Right. He's well, fucking divinity. The bro. supernatural <laughs> shit. I don't know if we should do that. <laughs> Not in the reasonableist party. I think we should skip that part. But there is some... You well, have to talk cult, about... I'm going to be divine. So that's the well, way it's going to go. That's what's going to make it so everybody's <laughs> fucking going crazy and their dicks are getting chopped off. But you have to you have to respect the utility of... I would say even the royal family. I think it's ridiculous. The royal family in England, I think, is ridiculous. And I think they waste a lot of money. But the queen represented a... She did a... Uh, you got to give her credit, whether... Unless you're Illuminati scum types and stuff, and, and mm. I get it, and I'm anti-government, I get it, but you got to give them credit for having kind of a high moral... I don't know about all the scandals. I'm not from England and stuff. I try to pay attention, but throughout most of it, she she said from the beginning, she's like, I am going to be your queen, and I'm going to hold a high moral standard, and she fucking did. I mean, all the Princess Diana stuff and all those little things, I don't know about that shit, but... And I think that gives Britain a pride in that group of people that they can kind of go after their politicians 
in a different way because we kind of protect Joe Biden and Donald Trump like they're our fucking king. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gross. But I think England has kind of, even with their moats and their castles and their silly dragon lore and all that stuff, they still have this separation between the admiration that the, the country takes pride in and then their fucking ruler, the, the prime minister, gets mm -hmm. a fuck... The, I love watching the two drink minimum fucking common uh, the what is it the Commonwealth it's, or the it's, the it's the House of Commons yeah the House of Commons when it's they, the same in Canada dude this is my favorite fucking thing if you want to be entertained it's go, amazing go watch a video footage of the House of Commons especially since all the shit's been going on with Trudeau dude like, you oh, want I would to watch, love to watch, watch that. people just fucking lose shout their shit yes. at Trudeau and like just shout over him when he's trying to talk oh. and he just like has a thousand yards dude but here in America if they don't stand <laughs> up like they don't all stand up in unison when he's talking for the state of the, the union address or some shit they're like what an offensive thing or like somebody rips up a piece of paper or somebody flips somebody off or something yeah. it's like they're throwing drinks at each other yeah. in england and yeah. canada and fucking australia i kind of love that who knows what australia's like i kind of love that i don't know that it's I, the most productive way to do it but it's, it's, it's so government fucking so it's awesome dude it's it, so fucking awesome it, it oh, you mean the it's like, yeah yeah the the fucking I th it's, it's like funny. it's like having it's like having your family that only hangs out on thanksgiving all of them <laughs> all for thanksgiving <laughs> yeah. dinner and then fucking Nana has one drink too many and says <laughs> yeah. one bad thing about your fucking ex-boyfriend and it's on, baby. <laughs> Biscuits are flying, fucking oh. stuffing in your eye. Yes. <laughs> Dude. And it's great. I've it's taken many people away from the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I know, that's a relatable Dude. simile. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's House of Common stuff that got me interested in C-SPAN because I was a C-SPAN junkie. Uh, bullshit straight from the bull's ass. Mainline. For a long time, I would get up at like four in the morning and watch C-SPAN Washington Journal and just listen to a guy read me the newspaper and have callers talk about it and shit <laughs> but it was the bbc it wasn't bbc it was the house of commons their version of c-span got pumped into our version of c-span one time and i was like they are fucking screaming at each other <laughs> and this is amazing why don't our politicians act like this yeah. and i think it's because they have a fucking king and queen and they represent the country as the first family and i think as as the I'm just going to throw this out there to the reasonableist party. I don't like government at all, but maybe human beings, we do, we should respect that, that kind of camaraderie and solidarity that we have as a land mass of people. We're, mm. we're a big bunch of countries really in this country, but that King and Queen gives England and it gives, you know, the emperor gives Japan this place to put some of the things that we That's don't I mean. have. It's a symbol. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't see the non-value in that. I don't like it, and I don't care about it, but I don't see how it's like... I, okay, we were talking about this before. Knight's Tale. Yes. Oh, Almost every movie. movie. <laughs> it's just like what, with you, Jeff. Whenever whenever you see somebody put their hand to their hat, like a, a right. soldier, and they, and they say, you know, that comes from the king. That comes from knights back in the day, right? And... Like the Knight's Tale, there's this this moment. I love that movie. Heath Ledger and, and the King. They it's talk so fucking good. And and there's just something about the King. If they do what you want them to do, which is be honorable, be a, a role model, and own your position, then you feel like I will die for my King, kind of thing. And and it always brings a little tear to my eye because it's like I hate government and I hate the idea of a centralized authority and fucking corruption and shit. But that but that's appeals to me. That, but that that's different. That's respect it for is. the man. And for, and for what he maybe symbolizes. Right. Instead of a yeah. president, a president to me symbolizes corruption, a bunch of money and a bunch of promises and gifts and shit to get there, a bunch of platitudes, treating us like we're stupid. I don't know if the king and queen well, of England ever... Time, and, a lo and a lot of blowjobs in the dumpster of Denny's. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Once upon a time, I think the presidency was closer to what you're talking about. It I was. think it's become shittier over it, time, for sure. Yeah, you I know? think our media has made not it that, more Not that. that fucking, you know, your George Washingtons and your Abraham Lincolns were perfect. Like, they weren't no. as good as you probably think that they Definitely were, not. you know? No. Even our founding fathers do. Benjamin Franklin. I don't want a perfect leader. Thomas Jefferson. They weren't, they weren't the Nothing. paragons Presidents that they're made out to be. You know, history's been kind to them, which I don't think is totally wrong. You know, like, that's I mean, another symbol. I would kind prefer it. I'd prefer the real T at the end of the day. But it's like, yeah, but I mean, they pulled some shit off that you didn't. Pull the weird off, thing so, is, the know. Greeks have gods. You know, the yeah. Egyptians have gods. We have some dudes that wore funny wigs and had weird shoes. You know, and we've turned them into kind of demigods. Where it's like you're talking shit about fucking Thomas Jefferson. It's like not really, but talking you know, shit about Poseidon, bro. I go out fishing every fucking exactly. day. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I, maybe I do have some critiques about some things. But the other thing about looking back in history, I'm going off on a tangent, but uh, the people of the time, like our morality right now, is one way, and it will be different in the future. To judge the past and judge all those men 
by uh, our current yeah. morality. Either way, to treat them like gods or to treat them like they're fucking, you know, <laughs> look at them. They don't know what we know as as twenty year olds in America, fucking public it, schooled. It was like, a different well, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was. Uh, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater either. Yeah. The philosophy of of some of those people unless, is unless the, the baby thing. just won't fucking stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> unless you get some branch dressing and you just eat the whole thing together. <laughs> So, so th- <laughs> this started with the two party system that there is some value to it, and oh, I'm, I'm proposing he, that he there is some value to it. He also ended that with something interesting too. Um, he said that the the way that a two party system should function, and apparently it has done this uh, at least one time in our country's history, which I'll have to look into because I don't I only know our history back to a certain point politically speaking. Mm. But uh, he said that the way it should work is when one or the other party becomes too tyrannical or is trying to wipe the other party out and become totalitarian, they are then to be dismantled and the other party is supposed to become the new two party system because like, there's gonna be always, you know schisms with parties. You know, degrees stuff, yeah. of how fucking Republican you are, how democratic you are, you know. So mm-hmm. like you it's not it wouldn't be hard, especially if I mean if you fucking look at it right now, both parties. It's oh, like, it's so it's much like fucking well, and progressives you know, and liberals. I'm like, are you guys sure you're on the same team? <laughs> exactly. I don't know that you I'm, are. Yeah. <laughs> There's like 14 flavors of conservatives now. It's like, what's a neo? What oh, or, yeah. or a paleo? Yeah. What's all these things? Well, and that's partially a side effect of our fucking the infatuation of the last 20 or 30 years of trying to fucking give everything its own title. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, like band why? genres. Why? Yeah, seriously, I fucking <laughs> have the same distaste for genres too. People are like, what kind of genre of music do you play? I'm like, I don't know. Good music. I, yeah. I, I hope. Four four. <laughs> We play from four four. We play in key. Four, it's in a key of stuff. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we play in four four because we can't count higher than. <laughs> Our drummer can play in seven Three, eight. And yeah, <laughs> sixteen twelves and stuff. Yeah, but Him I don't and Jerry know. Jerry do class up the operation. Like they do absolutely. <laughs> well, so the reasonableness reasonableness party. Uh, hey, I that, proposed we're a king it and parliamentary queen. by creating the reasonableness party, dude. So we're fucking defeating everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, but. I don't know if there is some unity to, or if there's some uh, usefulness to a two-party system. It does seem like there's some sort of checks and balances, like you said. Mm. But the scariest thing to me is a one-party system. That that to me seems yeah. like just fucking playing with 100% fire. I agree. So I almost would say like, we should try a three-party system. Well, a one-party system and is just an oligarchy, which we kind of are already flirting with, you know, with having, think, having a one party's candidate in power for four years, you know, it's like, Ooh. Well, that's kind of why I'm surprised yeah. now that the libertarian party in, in itself hasn't become widely popular because <clears throat> I mean, you talk to anybody pretty much walking down the road, everybody's tired of the bullshit. Mm-hmm. They're tired of both sides. They don't give a fuck. And they, you know, absolutely. They, they, I but think that's not even the libertarian party anymore. That's, I, I, mean, I know that's, that's kind of like old libertarianism. I used to consider myself a libertarian and I don't really say that anymore. Cause I'm, I, they've kind of, they're like Republican light at this yeah, point. Yeah, they jumped know? a shark it's, and lost the plot. Yeah, a lot which of which is kind of this, the wheel just sort of turns like that. No matter what party you're in, if you you know, wait well, and that's for a because you start to, you're like, what the fuck? That party's now the other. Is, is the that because yeah. you have to left, constantly you know? well, defend your think about your own beliefs based on what's in the media? So if you have to pick, so media, you know, there's the the right and left the arguments over the stupid shit, whether it be guns or abortion or whatever it is. So if you if you as a libertarian or put in a position to say, well, I think of this. Well, if it doesn't side with what a Republican thinks, well, then you're definitely you're a dumb a, liberal. You're a fucking yeah. milk if it toast, side with them, centrist, well, then you're just a fence Republican. sitting, yeah. still cowardly <laughs> piece of shit. You don't get to just <laughs> be an individual and say, I don't, you know, I don't fucking know. pick you know, a whatever, whatever your answer is. Well, it's, you know, the Libertarian Party is so small, and I've had kind of an intimate relationship with it off and on over the years. It's interesting because they have a schism that's happening the last few years. They've they've kind of become. I mean, they're still a very strong libertarian party, which is non-aggression principle and uh, small government. You know, leave me the fuck alone and let's cooperate in a market. You know, that kind of thing. Those are very. To be a libertarian is really that. You just have to believe those kind of things. Or it's just freedom from government as much as possible, but with still some government. That's libertarianism. Inside the Libertarian Party, and this is why Freedom Fest, when we went to that, the last year that I went to it, I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? Because it was a lot of uh, ideology had jumped in there, and it was Mm -hmm. that Trump stuff. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of libertarians do see Trump as saying, not libertarian things, but so much closer to libertarian things than what you get from progressives and, and normal Democrats and stuff. 
but there's a group called the Ludwig von Mises. Might be partially behind why the Libertarian Party now seems way closer to Republicanism yeah. is because of what you just described. The schism, because uh, Ludwig von Mises, there's this group after this economist uh, that I don't know. I think from what I understand, I mean, they embrace really under really basic economic principles that are kind of long term based, and they end up being pretty consistent and stuff. But I believe that they have kind of gone towards the popular route. They're like the memers and the shit posters, I believe. Uh, it might be the op opposite way around. I'm not paying attention that much. But My people. Right. I love shit posters. <laughs> and I think libertarian shit posters are pretty funny. Uh, and they hit both sides really well. It's kind of like South Park where it's like, we hate both of you. Let's <laughs> yeah. get you both. You all fucking suck. Yeah. But the schism in libertarianism, because it's so small, it's kind of, you can see the leaders and you can see how these things, like you were saying, how the party becomes another party. Where libertarianism, where it's only got a you know a few million people that even give a fuck about it, they've broken into perhaps two new things now because they they don't like each other. The other groups, which are like the Ayn Rand acolytes and the uh, Milton Friedman type people and like your kind of normal libertarians, they don't like the the shit posting and the activism. They're kind of more like Freedom Fest, where that we had it at the, it's at the Paris Casino and everybody's mm -hmm. wearing suits and ties and the heels and dresses and shit. Uh, there's that weird separation there. Anyway, it's fun to watch because it's so small and because the libertarians are very, very vocal and they fucking, their debates are interesting. They are. And yeah, I'll give them know. that. And I think uh, as far as things coming down to like a two two party type of structure, I wonder if some of that's not like genetically hardwired into us because when you look so. at human history, it, that's what that's what we know, man. It's It's us versus them. Mm -hmm. It's, red versus blue it's shirts versus skins who it's am i gonna fucking, go live with mom or dad it's, it's, <laughs> yeah no it's shit fucking exactly packers versus steelers you yeah know? Uh, yeah like it's it's a king versus the queen <laughs> yeah. sometimes you know like i wonder it's, if it's better to reduce the amount of tribalism it's like either this that it's system. either that or so you're saying or, we go more wwe and tag some other people in well <laughs> hey i mean that'd, <laughs> be, fight. that'd be interesting I would like that. yeah that would you be know the best speaking of that government. i think i think here's a here's a hot idea <laughs> and this is for free from me to you i think we should take uh the senate and we should bring in some referees I like this. And uh, they should be allowed to, within certain parameters, bare knuckle. beat each other's ass. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Like, Winner oh, of the bare knuckle are you brawl. Really? You want to propose that policy to me? Do you really? Is How much worth, does it mean to you? Is it worth your teeth? Is it worth me throwing you through that table right now? Because that's what's about Let's to happen. Let's start it out with my bar <laughs> pillow <laughs> fight <laughs> idea, <laughs> and then it'll turn into a fist yeah, fight. And then we yeah, can, yeah. And yeah. then we can also sell... Uh, <laughs> Senate sessions is pay per view, and it's fucking it's pumping money back into oh, yeah. the yeah, that's market, the taxes. Baby. We yeah. don't need to pay taxes. Yeah. Lower, yeah. Little, yeah. Lower taxes have that just pumping. like that. <laughs> I, that sounds funny. But there's probably some. YouTube, that would probably work better than government by itself. I think it would. That would probably fund it better too. I'm only a little bit taxes. joking. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Write that I'm shit down, that. somebody. <laughs> Whoever the secretary is, it, it, you can nominate yourself at home to be the secretary for the reasonableist party. Write this shit down, would you guys? Because <laughs> we're not going to. We're very busy. But, but these uh, these ideas, I think, are going to change the world here. We're busy sitting in the basement talking about it. So, so you got to go do it. So you figured out a thing, and I think we're going to have a king for the reasonableist party. A king. A, uh, not a king, a royal family, but not, they don't have any power. They're just the ones that maybe they talk for us. Maybe they'll go meet with whoever's got a president out there in the world and stuff. They can do, go do that stuff. But we just take care of ourselves. And maybe that's the, maybe if we can't get rid of policing and we can't get rid of that, some of the stuff uh, in the market, maybe that falls under there where it's like, well, then you make, then you'll have to deal with the king. You know, I don't know. That's just. <laughs> do you want to, do you want to call the court? We'll call the court. We'll call it the captain though. <laughs> call be a captain. I like the king. I, it's like, I will die for my king. I just want to be able to say that. <laughs> just, I will die for my king. Or my queen. I would die for either one of them. Maybe a prince. I'll die for a duke. You act like you'd actually get on a fucking horse. Yeah, I wouldn't. People no. want to. I'm probably allergic to horses. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> People <laughs> want that, though. I, I, won't, I won't be convinced otherwise. People want... Uh, to serve a king yeah. whether it's whether it's metaphorical or literal they want that how many dudes most listening them, right now and probably ladies too hashtag not all but how, most of them do yes how many dudes right now would have loved to have been given the opportunity to be a fucking samurai in in your life yeah serve your feudal lord yeah <laughs> be like you know who shouldn't just, have been one 
Tom Cruise. Hey, you back off, dude. Or Night. I fucking love that movie. That oh was God. <laughs> another movie three hours of my fucking life. Back. I'm, sad God, was I'm sad for you. I'm sad for you sometimes, Jeff. Tom, <laughs> Tom Cruise doesn't get some of the you credit. For you. That guy, the guy that trained him, who's a traditional hey. samurai, yeah. was like yeah. super impressed with how that guy managed. I get it. Dude. All the Hollywood shit. Yeah, he, didn't, no. he didn't sell it. Tom Cruise Tom Cruise is a, is a ridiculous human being, but he's a good fucking actor. Yeah. I like, you know, Outsiders, probably one of my favorite movies. Ever. Yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, good book good. too. That's an interesting f- favorite for you to pick out of his whole. Yeah, Pony Boy, stay yeah. golden, Pony stay Boy, golden, Pony Boy. <laughs> Whatever soda pop. I'm packing a heater. <laughs> As I step out into the bright sunlight. <laughs> Oh, yeah. shit. Jeff's got the whole poem. Yep. Going downtown, baby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't start that again. <laughs> All right. Well, we're almost done, you guys. This next one, we're going to talk about. Make it uh, sound like we're at the doctor. We're almost, almost done. done. Like, just got to sew you up. Finger up the butthole real quick. <laughs> <laughs> just got to get some stuff done in your lower <laughs> regions that you're not going to like at all. Uh, this one was advice I give myself. And this one's Jeff on the difference between quitting and failing. Yeah, so knowing the difference between quitting and failing. So, am I a quitter or a failure, Jeff? I, oh, it all depends. Ah. I mean, we we, we ah. all have to figure that out every, every day, right? And things yeah. that we do. Um, I think I'm in the middle. I'm just like a bitch. You're a quailer. I'm a qu- a what? <laughs> nice. a quitter and a failure. You're a quailer. Oh, qu- I'm a quailer. A quailer. <laughs> I mean, destiny, (laughs) failing is, you know, when you actually apply yourself, try as hard as you can. And for some reason you failed, whether it was outside your ability or or you just didn't do something right. Where quitting is you're, you're not trying, you just give up. Right. And then you treat your, then you treat yourself like you failed and you're down on yourself. What's it recognize that? Quitting and failing are the same in that you can restart. And you feel bad. And you feel bad? You feel bad when you quit and when you fail. Yeah, both of them feel like shit, for sure. But the reality is, in both circumstances, you have the ability to restart if you want. So if you're just quitting and you don't want to restart, don't act like you failed and go through all the failure symptoms, just say, I fucking quit. I didn't want to do it. And don't do it again. But if you do want to do it again then do it again so the difference is like the test you quit before the test or you take the test and you fail it's kind of right yeah yeah and then you have an option do it again or not which one's worse i think i think quitting it all i think it all depends by far i think it all depends upon context because it's easy to i i I, my knee jerk is my knee jerk is to agree with what you just said jeff that quitting is worse um but it really depends on what because i think so for me i treat quitting like uh a test of whether or not I really want to do the thing that I'm thinking about trying and perhaps failing at. If, if it doesn't mean enough to, if, if it doesn't mean enough to me for me to not quit before I even get into it, then I didn't really want it, you know, mm-hmm. or, or if I did, then I'm, I'm, I'm harming myself by convincing myself that I didn't, which is a whole other ball of wax. But if you're, if you can achieve a certain level of basic honesty with yourself, if you mm-hmm. look at a thing and go, I'm not going to do that. Or if you start doing it and you realize, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, this isn't what I thought it was, so I'm going to quit. I don't know that that's worse than, than, than trying and, and failing necessarily, but it would have to be in the context of perhaps something else like working out or yeah. Yeah. Like if it's, if it's a challenge that you're posing to something yourself that you're deciding that you to quit do is in because your you're afraid of the challenge, then I think quitting is worse. Yeah. I mean, if, you're, if you're, but there's a difference too, between like quitting and making a tactical retreat, which I talked to I've talked to people about this several times where it's like sometimes if you're standing in front of a brick wall and you're beating your head against it over and over and over with the same result which is a fucking migraine <laughs> right mm-hmm. then uh, maybe you need to quit fucking doing that take a tactical retreat reassess and then realize oh I could just climb over the fucking brick wall and well I've certainly done a lot I've, I've, certain, I've certainly yeah. started a lot of things in life that I intentionally quit because either I didn't like it or the, you know, for whatever issue um you're talking about the difference between quitting, but, but there's and a difference in in, in, in quit. Yeah, but then I didn't that. turn around and and turn myself into a failure because I quit. Right. I made a conscious decision to do so. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, versus maybe even someone like say quitting smoking. That seems to be a big topic mm-hmm. in the group. You know, people. Well, I 
I quit smoking, but then they fail because they because they do it again. So then they're just going to continue to smoke. No, you you didn't fail. You made a decision. You had a cigarette. You know you you intentionally do, did what you did, but that doesn't mean that you can't start again. Mm-hmm. You know you. When I was quitting smoking, I always I might have already mentioned this before, but. I looked at it like going into it. I was like, okay, I've, I quitted. I quit before, and so I knew it was going to be a constant battle. And it felt like the ultimate thing is a war, and I want to win the war overall. But there's a battle every fucking two minutes in my head, and I just want to win every battle that I can. And so I started. I I had this little, you know, dry erase board, and I put me and Sigs. And I drew a line and did the zero. And I put me one because I just beat it. And I quit. stats. I did. I love stats. I'm stupid. But the stat that was most important after like the first, I don't know, 20 little ticks, which was like 45 minutes. I had won 20 little battles in that little time. That zero on the cigarette side motivated me to keep it that way. It was right. like, I can't. After I'm a day or two. It, I did that. And, 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 and this was before so many. I remember shit. this. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah. It's like yeah it was valuable yeah. and it was just a little mental trick where it's like if i keep well, that zero i want to keep that's that zero. what it really comes down to and it's what you're both talking about in a, yeah. in a roundabout way is it's it's you have to you have to determine what your mental tricks are that bring you closer to success in whatever it is that you're doing so yeah. for for what you're talking about jeff is you're saying don't you know your mental trick is not treating when you quit like it's like you're a failure it's because that puts you in a in a mindset to where it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and you you just you're you're convincing yourself that you're a failure so you become a failure you and, know and my own yeah. personal example this was you know I, I, you guys know i was really wanting to do a, a bodybuilding show of some sort yeah uh over 50 um but you guys also know me well enough to know that well, I'm not going to do it just to say that I did it and show up on stage and, you know, maybe yeah, you want to win. Yeah, I don't you, win the motherfucker. You're going to fucking get up there in nothing but <clears throat> well, boots and dance naked and try to sing. <laughs> and and show yell at all the other competition and be like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> they all leave. Yeah. Which yeah. makes me sad that you didn't do it because I would really love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I had to make a decision. I, I had to be realistic and go, no. If I really want to be winning competitions and do this, I'm going to have to get into steroids. And I didn't want to go down that road. Because I'm doing this for health too, right? Yeah. It's not just to look good naked and flex, right? Um, so I quit. I, I, I quit going down that road. I still lift and everything every day. Well, you're a fucking failure, dude. Yeah. So, but <laughs> the, that's what I'm saying is, I for a time, I, I say this because I felt this. I was treating myself as though I failed, as though I gave up on a goal. But I had to stop and think. No, I quit. I quit for these reasons. Now I need a new goal to go after. Mm-hmm. And I need to know exactly why I'm going after the goal and what I need to do it. Yeah. And I might fail along the way, you know. Yep. But that's, again, it's it's a decision to keep going. So whether you quit or you try and you fail, the best answer is to pivot and continue to move yeah, forward. Yeah, either, either restart what you were doing and try it again or find another direction to go. Just don't fucking stop. So if really, you stop, that's where the problems come in. So would, is it fair to say that you never really fail in life? You always have, I mean, I, until your deathbed, you always have a chance to try it again. Failures is a weird word. I mean, it is. I mean, and, and you, you don't, failing is maybe you didn't su- succeed your goal when you wanted to or whatever it was or even you lost. But all failure is is the next stepping stone to which you you know where you have achieved and now you have to make it to that next level yeah i so, think yeah. i think failure so is a huge I valuable get to thing it. to your life i love getting excited when i fail lifting weights lifting to failure that's oh, exciting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know? when you when you can't do anymore you're like well that's yeah, how strong like, I am. and it's like fuck yeah, yeah. That, well, that sucked and that's yeah. evidence that failure is a thing it does exist i mean there's not like anybody's like there's no such thing as failure it's like well yeah it, there is if you if you like i'm gonna yeah. I'm going to try to pick up that fucking rock and you try and you don't pick up that fucking rock. You fail. <laughs> There's <laughs> a whole know? industry but, of videos, but about failure, that. but failure is always a lesson. It's right. it's, it's so it's always valuable, you know? So don't, don't treat failure like oh, it's the end. I didn't pull it off. Oh, so it? fucking, but you ugh. can't, what I guess I'm a failure. It's like, you should be proud that you tried and you failed because that failure taught you that the way you went about it was not correct and you need to do adjust it. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's what I was saying uh, in the sense that can you really fail at life? Because you always have the opportunity to, I would never even look at it like that. And and every time, like like I've, I'm not a great businessman. I don't think I'm really not wired that way, but I've tried 
running businesses since I was 20, oh, really even earlier than that. And every one of them has been a failure, but I never think of it like, oh man, I wasted my time and I wish I had that much. I don't. It's like, man, I learned all those things and now it made me better. It made me maybe have a better chance at success in business think, in the future. I think failure is a byproduct of intention. So, I mean, saying that you failed at life, well, you didn't intentionally start life. It just kind of happened to you. Yeah. So I guess you can't really fail at it because you didn't set an intention for it. You know what I mean? It's like as a whole, it's kind of a ridiculous thing to say. Yes. But but Certainly then, can but fail then like what you're talking about with like a business, you know, you could be like, I'm going to start this business. If your intention was to see what you can make of it, which is usually your intention when you're starting a fucking mm -hmm. business, I wonder what I can make of this idea that I have, this thing that I would like to do. And it doesn't pan out to be the thing that you ride a fat horse into retirement on. Huh. You didn't fail your initial intention. Because you just wanted to see what you could make out of it, and yeah. you did. And and then if it crashed and burned, then you just have to decide, okay, how did I go about that? Was it wrong? Was it flawed in some way? Oh, could so I do it? Could yeah. I do it differently or in a different format, and maybe get it further with it, or maybe make it into something more than this iteration was? Or what are my personality traits that are hindering me? Yeah, that's that's it's one always of the an opportunity I always to learn. learn something, and if it's learning something about yourself, that's arguably the most valuable. Dude, like mm -hmm. failing in business teaches you your blind spots. Because I mean, I, my father is probably. He's a very good businessman. He's a professional CPA. He's run a lot of corporations. He's a very wealthy guy. I'm not my father. Like, I learned to impress my father. I learned a lot of economic stuff at a young age just to be like, D Daddy, do you like what I know about, did, you know, did to do? Can you balance a checkbook? Barely. Like, well, I'm good at, I'm good at <laughs> yeah. math, but I'm not disciplined enough to. That's the thing. Like, I like math. Nobody but has I'm, checkbooks anymore. So. <laughs> but, but when I did have a checkbook, I wasn't disciplined with it. Because yeah. it's just, I'd rather go play, go do art. That's, that's really kind of my mindset with things. It's like, I like business a lot and I respect people that do it and I want to try and succeed at it. But I really would rather do art. And so when I set out to do anything, almost every project I do is because it's like, I want people to in, enjoy my art. Maybe I'll make them laugh or make them think or they'll dance or something or forget about what they're doing. It's not like when I make Scatcast, for example, it's not like, I'm going to make a bunch of money. Nope. nope, this one makes me a bunch of money. It's like, I hope I make, like, it's really good for me, I think. I make myself laugh all the time and so I feel better <laughs> about my life. And that's all it is it's like i hope people laugh i hope people feel good and this show it's like i hope people fucking they get something from what yeah. we're talking about well i heard i've heard more than one and i guess it's easy to say this when you're a wealthy person but still i see some truth to it i've heard more than one wealthy person say that if you're doing what you're doing and your primary motivation is your paycheck you're 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 setting yourself up for a, sh a shit ride through life yeah. and, that's, and that's just the way that it is yeah. that's not to say that there's any shame in working a job to get, make no. some fucking money that's not what that's, i'm saying no there's and things you need to do in life but they're saying they're that's saying the yeah they're saying that that shit should be a secondary or tertiary goal it shouldn't be your primary focus and if it becomes that way and you know of course there are times where you gotta knuckle down and and you know work for the paper to feed you and your family like i get that and that's that's honorable in mm -hmm. my opinion but you can still keep shit in perspective i did that shit for a lot of years where i was just like i gotta i have to work this shit job that i really fucking hate because it is my means for survival right now and it's a means to an end but I always framed it that way in my mind. I'm like, this isn't the be all end all. This is just my stepping stone to the next thing that I'm yeah. trying to get to. And if you don't let it go, you're going to get closer to the thing as long as you keep holding on to it. You know, so I don't know. That was a weird tangent, but you just reminded <laughs> me of that shit. But I love it. <clears throat> Follow your dreams, bitches. Yeah, that's that's where it came from. Was you were talking about art, art versus business, and it's like, well, I mean, there's they're not they're not entirely separate, but at no. the end of the day, you're you're being led by your heart, not your pockets. You think know? how many musicians we know and think about how many of them are good business people. Or a couple. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we know hundreds, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what I, I mean. I think Joey it's, Anderson's pretty good. Yeah, he is. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And he's a good artist, too. Yeah, he'd be a solid um, example. But yeah, and I know a few in town that are really good at it. You know, Sammy Eubanks is a good businessman. Yeah. yeah. And, that's and he's a great singer and he's he knows his product 
That Shaden guy sucks, though. He's <laughs> no, all the sovereign citizen people seem to just like the art. I saw him play a charity show. What the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some. <laughs> we played for either exposure or charity. Will you come play for charity? Time. What's this charity for? My business? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? We would like to spend the money on ourselves. Damn, I should have asked ahead of time. <laughs> they got me with the charity thing again. <laughs> <laughs> so we got here from quitting and failing. That's a, We came a long way from there. But I do like that, uh, knowing the difference between quitting and failing. And I don't think you can fail in life, really, uh, overall. You just do life. Well, it's not. You, you can at fail yourself. at a lot of things, but, yeah, it's the, but, but, but the whole point is the mindset. It's okay. You're yeah. gonna, don't you're don't gonna let sail, failure You're going to fail at more things than you're going to succeed yeah. at. And That's it's a, just how life is. Lots of, lots of people that have come before you have, have looked at failure as a lesson, and it's hard because it hurts and the chemistry of your body is going to do what it's going to do. If you feel like you failed and you feel sad or you let somebody down or something, you'll feel that way. That's okay. But Sit with that. You learn something yes. about yourself. And you learn something about the people around you too. If mm. they're, if they're putting that kind of pressure on you and you might be stuck there, it might be your kids or some shit, but talk to them or whatever. But I don't know. You can get past this. All right. So last thing on the docket today is, uh, your things that we learned. The thing that you learned. Yes, I'm and it's so about, excited. Let me get my notes. It's one of the most <laughs> mind-blowing things. He does this every week, doesn't he? Shaden brings <laughs> us something that's like, what the fuck, dude? I think I had a, I think I had a softball one week, but I'm, I'm learning all the interesting things as much as I can. This one's pretty fucking. And I'm not saying I'm doing it for you guys because I'm was kind of this way before. Jeff but. didn't hear the numbers because we talked about this outside. Yeah, yeah I want. Dude. We got to get him to guess. Okay, okay, okay. So let me let fun. me set it up. Let me set it up. Bear with me. I'm going to get a little bit verbose, but you guys have to understand the scope of this, okay? So this is uh this is about this is in regards to the population of giant squids in the ocean. Okay? So I got sucked into looking at this um uh, report by Roper and Shea. I don't know. They're probably they must know some shit, but it was from 2013 and they were trying to f determine what the total population of giant squids specifically giant squids not all squids but the big like the fucking the ones that were Tearing, like it's a kraken right you know, those tearing ones. down the ships yeah um they were trying to figure it out and uh so they they f they figured it out by uh because sperm whales are there's like 360,000 of them roughly left yeah. in the ocean and their primary diet is squids right so they're like well if we can figure out how many are being eaten at what rate, then we can extrapolate that data to determine roughly what the giant squid population is, right? And how so, many squids would a sperm whale eat in a day? Do we know? We do. I want you to guess, though. I want you, I want, I want you to fucking... Because I already spoiled it for Zach yeah, earlier, I'm but I also... Am I like guessing make, how many they eat a day? Too. You can guess that, but ultimately I want you to guess about yeah. roughly how many... Like, take a step yeah. in the dark. How many fucking giant squid, specifically giant squid, do you think are in the, all the ocean? Well, three or six, fuck. Carry the one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say like at least three theme. billion. Three billion? Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. So you weren't as blown away as we were. So here's the facts. Here's the facts. All right. So there's an uh, 360,000 sperm whales. If they ate one squid, one giant squid a month, that would be 4.3 million a year. If they only ate one a month. Jeez. Right? Uh, if they ate one a week, that would be 18.7 million in a year. Giant squids Jeez. eating. Right. Uh, so in actual whale stomach samples, uh, approximately 1% of the 700 to 800 for female sperm whales, 300 to 400 for males, the boys don't be eating as much in the sperm whale community, but 1% of all of that is uh, our, our giant squids. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> this is where it bent my brain. Um, the actual eaten uh, estimate of just giant squids is over 3.6 million a day, which is 131 million giant squids eaten by sperm whales in a year. Okay. okay. You with me so far? Yeah. So now that you have that number, you can multiply by percentages to get population estimates, right? So if the, if How that, survive if that is, yeah, eating. if that is, if the sperm whales are eating half of the giant squid population, 50%, be 260 million, then, yeah, it'd be 262 million, right? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's not if, nearly what it is. If it's if it if they're eating uh, 33%, then that's 397 million total population. 25% would be 524 million. And 10%, which is what they're saying is probably closer to accurate, then we're looking at 1.3 billion giant squids in the ocean. So Jeff didn't, so, we weren't fooled by shit. Yeah, yeah Jeff well, there's, a lot, there's a lot more ocean than land. It puts in a there's lot. There's a lot more space for them to be. I it puts that in perspective, though. That out when fucking, I read that. Yeah. I was like, no way. Well, like, the ocean's I was, I was like, I was like, I don't know. The ocean's big, so like maybe 500 thousand <laughs> right you know right a mean? sperm like, or, or of, uh, giant yeah, squids because giant squid. yeah. <laughs> and there's not that many whales it's not like there's billions of whales there's like tens of thousands yeah. of whales well, and we're only talking thousand. about one specific kind of squid too which is one percent of what those whales are eating one yes. percent there's a the lot of shit squids. in the fucking ocean yeah the ocean is fucking crazy more good reason not to be in the ocean there's there's like not a lot of footage of giant squids though for there being uh, that many of that them many which is both a testament to how fucking huge the ocean is. Or how fucked up their math is, maybe. It's and probably also evidence of No, aliens. I think it's more about how fucking, how fucking the lack of funding for ocean exploration. There's just fucking not much of that to go around. Yeah, we don't have ocean to see. Oceans yeah. Much, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a Stargate down there and they're just kind of zipping around. We spend planets. way more money on space exploration than we do on exploring our own oceans. But I didn't know this until recently. Did you not? Do you know NASA also does sea exploration? I didn't know that. I did not. Yeah, they fucking do. I know that they dump a bunch of junk in there. Yeah, so they yeah probably, I've learned it's that. Probably up to them. <laughs> Point Nemo, Freaking baby. Yeah. Squids. Probably, we're going to lob it in there, and it's going to hit the biggest of the 1.3 billion giant squids, and it's going to come and just <laughs> crack it. <laughs> and that's how we all go. And fuck yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. I think we've exhausted all of the things that we felt like talking about. Uh, but we do have, yeah, we have a few letters from you guys that we want to read, and we'll do that next. Okay. So Let's you, read some letters. Yeah. We just got a letter. Well, here, I'll read a couple shorties. Okay. Read and then some you shorties. Get, and then you got one. Uh, this one's actually kind of to the Bear Bear Man. And this is from Robert. The bear says, Bear Man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's spelled two different ways. Jeff, will you be my dad? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I Back off. He's my dad. dime for every time I heard that. <laughs> He says, I need a supplier of bear and venison meat, and I think if anyone could teach me to hunt, it might be you, sir. He's probably right. <laughs> Many years ago, my own father took me hunting one time. I don't think he really knew how to hunt himself, but I know bringing along an ADHD preteen boy didn't help our chances. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you were catching squirrels. <laughs> also, I want to say I'll be registering to vote this year and labeling myself a part of the reasonable ISTIS <laughs> party. That's Love awesome. you guys. Thanks for the ride, Robert. Yeah. Thank putting you, that Robert. right in, Robert. I love it. Uh, what, part you, <laughs> what part of town is Robert from? Does it? Does I forgot. It no, I didn't print out where he's from. Uh, I don't know. He's not from too close to here. Oh, we got by. Mrs. We'll, we'll have check our, it out. We'll have our uh, team of researchers who are highly qualified look into that for you. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, we have one of our trusted turd triad, uh, Donald Fisher, our shitbox wizard. He, he wrote in there, hey there, fellers. Tis the whiz here. Uh, I just heard you mention you needed some topic suggestions, and I would like to offer one up yet for y'all. Oh, yeah. First on. jar is great. Thank you, shitbox wizard. You're great. If I wrote in about every topic that your show reminds me of, I'd probably never stop writing emails. Uh, I really like that I'm on the same page with most of what you discuss. I really do feel at home here with everything Scatcast. We love you. Uh, Zach, that was me adding that. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach, you and your crew have sparked so many positive changes in my life, and I'm very thankful for that. Us too. Uh, which brings me to this letter topic, which targets Bear Bear. A few weeks ago, a discussion started about challenging ourselves, and Jeff suggested a program called The 75. Could you guys elaborate more about this program and maybe toss out some workout from home ideas and some basic healthy dieting ideas? Right now, as far as I know, uh, Chikatilo's Fluffer, Jeff, Shaden, and myself have accepted this challenge, and I'm excited to keep working towards a positive and healthy lifestyle. Uh, I've been super lazy about exercise and eating healthy, and now that I'm doing the best I've ever done with quitting smoking, yeah, nicotine toothpicks, fuck the FDA. <laughs> fuck I the FDA. I don't want to stop there, and we're not going to stop even if the FDA is fucking us. Uh, I'm even trying to get my wife to take this challenge with me. Thanks again for all you guys do. Keep skitting and a scatting, and I'll keep a shitting and a shatting. <laughs> and I love you all sincerely. One turd of T3, loyal KBS for life, kitty box. Yeah, yeah. Kitty box soldiers, kitty butthole soldiers, and the shitbox wizard. T cubed, baby. <laughs> and I, yeah, I actually did write back to, to him on that. But for anybody that is listening, um, 
at a later date, I'm actually going to talk about Andy Frisella is the one that uh, came up with uh, 75 Hard, and his podcast is uh, Real AF. Uh, he owns uh, First Forum and I think seven other businesses. Uh, very maybe, successful guy. He maybe was, we'll do it and we'll invite him on. He does people's podcasts a lot, doesn't he? Like you can just invite yeah. him and he'll come Well, I don't know if he would so. just like kind of show up, but that'd be pretty awesome. Or like we could remote him or something. I don't know. Yeah. He He's be definitely fun. somebody I He's an interesting to dude, Andy yeah. Frisella. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so yeah, he came up with the program himself. I think he lost something like 150 pounds, and the guy's just a beast. He's yeah. like 260 pounds, and he's probably under 10 percent body fat. He's just a monster. Uh, Robert's it, from Texas, by the way. From Texas. That's from Texas. Mrs. Scriptkeeper, who has all the scripts. That's mother. a place I want. I would love to go down there and get some hogs and whitetail. So we, we can have a lot of We can have a talk. Texas, Ooh, yeah, Texas has got a lot of be cool. Yeah, a lot of love down there. Uh, anyway, so that the, the particular workout that I'm talking about, uh, you, you work out twice a day for 45 minutes. One of those workouts has to be outside. Um, you have to take a progress picture of yourself every day. You have to read 10 pages from either a book that teaches you something or some sort of, like an autobiography or uh, some sort of mm. um, self-help type book. Something positive. Something is, yeah, yeah. So, so, where you're the, learning something. The Getting Silmarillion, something I think that counts. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fifty Shades to Go Fuck Yourself probably isn't, <laughs> yeah. isn't going to work. Except for with Hobbits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, drink a gallon of water a day and then uh, follow a diet. There is no specific diet for this. You get to make up your own diet, but obviously it doesn't include fucking nachos and you know cookies. Damn. Follow a diet. You get a, make a sensible diet for what you want. You can put on weight. You can put on size doing this, doing this program, or you can lose weight. You can tailor your own workouts and your own diet to what it is that you want to do, but do these specific things as far as the two workouts a day. Uh, and the other one is that there is no alcohol. You cannot drink on this. And there is zero cheating. You lick a cookie, you're done. You start back at day one. Um, uh, I did this program once before. I actually did 100 days, um, which was a lot of fun. And I it, was that. it was phenomenal. I mean, I don't know what my body percent fat was, but it was probably... You guys own that shit. Like 7%. Most people are struggling at the last 70, you know, last five days. And you guys are like, we're going to do another Yeah, 25. I just want to do 100 and... This, well, so this next not. year, so then after this is kind of the boot camp for a program called Live Hard, where there's three other phases <laughs> that go on throughout the year. But also, I did the math; it's really <laughs> six months working out is really what it is. But it's a great program, and this is this is not. I was already in good shape when I went into it, and I got in phenomenal shape doing this program. But I didn't do this program for really the physical aspect of it. It, it, it was an enticer, and you know I was definitely going to give it my all mm -hmm. but there's so much mental discipline that this program starts with with the reading with having to take the pictures and the gallon of water and just being really strict like you i really i did I, I purposely did not get on my on facebook the whole time that i did 75 hard good um just it was just a, another discipline I, f I found myself adding discipline into my life and oh I, yeah the more you start so, to do discipline so especially organized. With and then hard, the, yeah. as these other plans they're like the w when you get into so this is seven and a half hour then there's phase one and it's, it's kind of the same thing except for you add in a five minute cold shower and 15 minutes of meditation um good with the meditation and, and it's all good with the cold showers too i take cold showers now all the time yeah explain i started, I started doing that like i absolutely hate them but I'll, I'll do them we I guess do it. I, i've actually come to enjoy it <laughs> well and that's i was kind of getting to the point where i was okay with them and it was i it was the first thing in the morning and it was my thing was i'd just crank music and i apparently have a thing with dancing because i would <laughs> i would dance to where i got hot in the cold water nice <laughs> that's oh, yeah. why i kind of got used to that but the principles behind the yeah, cold, tell us cold why, showers why this why this is good well I mean, you can just look up why a cold shower is good, but I mean, it's good for your you blood be the, pressure. You'd be my it's, Google. It's, it's good for your blood pressure. It's good for your uh, in body pains. It's actually yeah. supposed to be good for your sex life. It's a lot of shrinkage, it's, though. It's your immune system. <laughs> it helps you wake up in the morning. It helps you go to sleep at night. Because it stimulates your vagus nerve. No. Fuck I, yeah. I would assume that an ice bath is going to be way better, but. I don't have a lot of ice baths available to me, so the cold I couple, shower work. I have a couple of buddies that have been working on sitting in a cold river for a minute at a time, and now a couple of them are up to like half hour at a time. Mm. No it's sure. like, it does seem like a 
masochistic. But, but, if that, but that's the whole thing. It really does fall into that do something uncomfortable every day. You need to do that. Yeah, but don't sleep life. on a bed of nails, for fuck's sake. What the hell? Well, it's a cold shower. It's not a bed of nails. You don't need to shove you know, a parking cone up your ass to prove that you're tough. Come on. It's no. a cold shower, Zach. I know. I know. It's cold water. No, I get it. I get it. It's not, it's not it's, driving it's, a stake through your it's hand. It's your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is your whole body going, fuck. That's a great way to start your day. Fuck. Every day. Fuck. So that comes in later, but the 75 hard is the, is the great place to start. And I, no bullshit, it will change your life. It will change your life. And oh, yeah. even my, well, I even got my own, well, one of my sisters to do it. And you know what? Change your fucking life. What do they need? What, what would you need to start it? Um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, do you need a gym membership? No, you don't fucking, need a gym membership. You just do I need a real nice camera. No, you want to go Porsche? You need a pair of shoes to go jogging. Okay, I can do that. You know, you or jog, do push ups. Two forty five minute walks a day. Yeah, it still it's it, yeah, it's if, really if, accessible. Just if depends that's where on you're, what you can do. Exactly. Yeah. If that's where you're at, is walking around the block, then you walk around the block for forty five minutes twice a day. So what do I need to, to? What does somebody need to purchase? to do this nothing zero things yeah that's free. fucking amazing yeah. there, there's a book it's a they free rec- program they, they recommend you buy the book but it's not required you can do it without the book uh, by the way buy the book I and actually you have to get it from andy for uh, uh, yeah. dot com dot yeah. com and, website yeah i got and, it and buy the book and it's a great book and you're gonna read it and you automatically you're, you're like oh fuck yeah i've been a little bitch and i'm gonna get off my ass and i'm gonna get going i'm gonna do it now yeah he yeah. just has a way of communicating that really fits my style probably because he says fuck about yeah. every third word. <laughs> yeah. so i really understand it well that um, motivation it comes and goes though how do you stay motivated on a program like this it, it just happens yeah. Does it? it just because you well, i'll tell you why because whether you want to or not you're going to see results not just physically i mean you can work a, out a day you can work two, a day two days three days you're not going to see shit but in three weeks you will right right what you're doing today you're going to see the benefit of a month down the road right that's the mindset you that's have a to great have mindset to have yeah but what happens is you automatically start feeling different because all of a sudden you are dedicated to this thing that you're doing so you're working out it keeps you on a schedule it forces you to be organized it forces you to be disciplined mm-hmm. and you don't want to lose because speaking of failure the worst person to ever fail face to face with is yourself mm-hmm. and if you let yourself go on this program if you don't if you miss a, a, a photograph of yourself you're, like, you're ah. done you got to start over so it forces you to, to be, be disciplined, disciplined check all those boxes and get yeah. the it's does a photograph really do anything for your health no it doesn't but it's a discipline. Mm-hmm. You do it every day. There ends up being a purpose for it because you do get to go back through that 75 days and you can see the change. And it's it's phenomenal. Mm. If you do it, if you do it, you will see change. Not only physically, more mentally than physically, and you will live your life differently. Now, just like anything else, it, it's a perishable skill. So if you let yourself slip out of that just in, in life, you know, it, you can be right back where you are. But I think that after you learn these disciplines, people tend to recognize it faster mm-hmm. and get right back on track because they don't want to go back where they where they came from anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah once That's you- why I totally support this program. There's no money involved in this, or obviously, or anything. I'm, I'm speaking from, from my own personal standpoint and watching other people do it because I did it and watching their success and watching how it literally changed everything <clears throat> excuse me everything about how they live yeah once the so, mind expands around a new idea it can never return to its original size right and it changed and me discipline is something that you gain from it holy fuck that's one of the more valuable yeah. things to have i i, I had discipline before belt. and it was able to get in shape before but this changed me a lot more of a lifestyle of discipline yeah, yeah. and and I, I will tell you that i last year i started i did phase one and i got to the end of phase one and i didn't feel like i did it hard enough i was unimpressed with my with my effort so i was just going to do it again and then we then we just decided to do another program so we're going to start again after deer season so it was november 22nd was the day that i wanted to start my question is you guys aren't going to turn into like vegans and shit and they just be like god you guys gotta do this program oh you don't do it fuck off somebody might want to turn into a vegan no no no, i don't care if somebody wants to say you know an activist type uh oh no no i gotta do my thing like the circuit trainers what were those people (laughs) looking like you gotta do this kind of training you don't want to do it you don't have to but you might have to deal with a couple guys that are super amped up about it for a while because we're excited because we're seeing positive change i love it and it's contagious man there is nothing more contagious about 
being around positive people that are doing good shit and then when you're doing it too it's just just like the opposite of negativity positivity will just well, with, with exercise and as you as you I don't want to say clean your body but as you your body becomes more healthy your mind becomes more healthy yeah and that's fucking a nice treat for a lot of us because we live in our fucking our diet pepsis and you know we get those chemis, chemicals diet crystal pepsi give <laughs> <laughs> me the dumb brains <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being here again. This was a fun one. This is kind of a marathon. Wait, we got oh, one had, more. We got one more letter. One real quick thing to add to Donald on that. I, I, I had mentioned um, he kind of wanted some more tips on working out and stuff like that, stuff he can do at oh, home. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm coming in. This is my hunting season, but again, probably during 75, I will actually hold outside competitions or things that you can join me and do not necessarily a competition but a competition with, with yourself. yourself yeah not they're not, fun not against each other but you i have hard I, ones though they're hard i I'll, I'll give us give us a little give yeah, me something i can do you know i like five thousand you know, push-ups a day that was hard jeff no that was a hundred a day <laughs> and then two that went up to 500 no Fucking but five break it down to too much i don't know maybe we'll do like uh you know what a squat thrust is? It's yeah. like a burpee, but easier. A lot of sex. We'll you know, start out like a. We'll do fifty days of squat thrust. You start with one. The next day you do two. The next. Don't make me have three. to do stuff with my knees. Progressive. All right. God, well, see, that's the problem. Is if you ask me to do something for you, then you complain about everything I know. <laughs> I can't fucking help you. I don't want your help. I want to just bitch about things, and I want you to make it better. Give me a pill that makes me healthy, Jeff. All right, we do have one last letter. Okay. For yeah. Today. I'm gonna read this one. Um, and I think it seemed it seemed clear that we had permission to share this, so I hope it's cool, Nick. But uh, we were all pretty touched by your letter that you sent yeah. in, so I'm going to read it. Um, Nick said, uh, this week's episode of JAR was perfect timing, to say the least. I work construction for the union, which always has the possibility for layoffs when work is slow. I always assumed if I worked my ass off and always showed up on time, it, it would never happen to me. Kona agrees with you. Turns out I was wrong. The whole construction industry is slowing down right now with all the school projects closing when the school year is starting. This was an especially hard time for me to get laid off because I'm currently working to move from the friend my family and I have been living with so my daughter who just started kindergarten can have her own room. I immediately was struck with guilt and feelings of inadequacy as a man. What was I worth if not a provider? And how do I even cope with this? I was at work when I got told I was laid off and decided instead of sitting in my thoughts, I'd play the newest episode of my favorite podcast in the world oh, to man. keep me distracted for an hour or so. That's so fucking sweet, man. Yeah. Then the guys started talking ab uh, about a lot of the feelings I was heavy into feeling right now. I have to be honest, I'm not an emotional guy, but given my state and the timing, I pulled over and cried for a second. Mm. I then decided when I got home that instead of wallowing in self-pity or hitting the bottle, I would ask for help. I called everyone I knew, hoping for side work, and I'm going to continue to grind. I'm going to get up every morning, hit the gym, and come home and bury myself in my art and hopefully find some supplementary income for the time being. I just wanted to say thank you. This episode inspired me to keep moving instead of shutting down when I wanted to. If by some miracle this is read, it's totally cool if you use my name. It's Nick. Nick, yeah. Dude. First off, Nick, that... We're just, all a little teary. <laughs> a little frosty in the eyes. A little I, I read misty. it out loud because I'm the most soulless of the three of us. But you, <laughs> yeah, you, I wasn't you even, able You to. even got me choked up, man. Yeah, you... <clears throat> Yeah, How about what you're worth? A lot. Like, you're a thoughtful person. You're worth fucking your weight in gold by a lot on this earth. Uh, so just keep keep on going, man. I mean, I'm, And what I was going to say was, letter. first off, thanks for writing that and yeah. having, sending, taking the time to share that with us. Yeah, and having the guts, too. And then allowing yes. us, saying it's okay to share with other people. I mean, that's... That's three brave things or so. Yeah. I mean, that's... And that's what... Everybody asks what masculinity is. That's being a man, right? Absolutely. Yeah, That's agreed. being a good human being. Uh, agreed. Especially keeping your priorities in order like that, man. There's, it would have been way easier to do any of those other things that you listed off, and you know, sunk into a pity party or drink it away so you don't have to think about it until the next day. But it's going to be right there waiting for you, and you just, you, you fucking sucked it up. 
and uh, leaned into and, it and leaned into it and got after it and you're working to make your situation a little bit better every day and if you keep doing that I guarantee you you're going to end up in a better place man and the reality is when when you continue to do positive things through the adversity positive things come to you yeah. big time if you yeah. stop everything stops if you continue the opportunities will yeah. come you got to make yourself sometimes not run. timely and, and you know what it is hard to go ask for help yeah. it, that is that is yeah. that is a tough thing to do and yeah. you know i you know commend you for doing as a man what you had to do and then stepping up and 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 not feeling sorry for yourself and understanding that if you keep moving the opportunity will come yeah mm -hmm. remember it's one step at a time always it's one foot in front of the other so if and, things look kind of spooky way down the line, remember, it's like, well, I still got a lot of steps and I'll probably learn something along the way. on one of those steps anyway. I should yeah. clarify that opportunity is going to come not because it's magical. It's because you're continuing to move and, and move forward. You will create the opportunity, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, you created three misty eyed grown men, too. So yeah. well done. Well, and on a on a more self uh, self-serving note, I, uh, you know. Thanks for sharing that because that's, I mean, out of all the, all of our motivations, and I know I speak for all three of us in this, out of all of our motivations for sitting in a basement and yakking into microphones for hours every week, that, that what you just sent us and your, your willingness to share it with us and our, you know, allowing us the ability to help you through something tough. That's the fucking reason we're doing it above yeah. everything else, man. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm, I'm I appreciate that deeply and I'm, I'm glad we could be there for you, dude. Just a ride pod at gmail.com. And we've get lots of these letters, you guys. Thank you. Keep sending them in. And yeah. we'll, don't we'll keep don't make them. us get all emotional all the time, though, dude. I can't handle that shit. <laughs> Today was a the, fun one. The Grinch's heart grew three sizes, and it hurt. <laughs> you, you even got the bird. Shaden, Shaden, you know, he's got a lot of empathy, but it's selective. And, uh, it and you touched him. So. I might be big guy and kind of wild and stuff. You're a I'm softy. super, super You're emotional. You're softy. It, all <laughs> emotions. Too. I just yeah. have them all. Right. Yeah can vouch <laughs> well it is just a ride and it makes it fun to have all those emotions on the ride it wouldn't be fun oh, I, without I, all those emotions wouldn't be human I welcome my own emotions yeah. <laughs> we just want to I tame laugh them. in the face of danger <laughs> we just want to mirror we just want the things that we think to be similar to the things that we do and the emotions kind of get in the way sometimes but sometimes they make them better yeah. it makes it easier all right. Well, thank you guys, my cool. brothers. I appreciate this. That's a wrap. Fucking Shaden and Jeff and the Zach and me. And uh, we'll talk at you in the future. It'll seem like the present. Bye. 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 It's just a ride. Whoa, oh, it's just a ride. Bing. Bong. Poop. Poop. <laughs>